it being 6 6 33 p.m on june 21st 2023 i call this meeting of the brockton conservation commission to order it's being conducted remotely in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting laws mass general law chapter 38 section 20 real-time participation and comment can be addressed to the conservation commission using the zoom virtual meeting software for remote access if you wish to comment during a public input of the hearing please use the raise your hand function to be addressed at the appropriate time. For those of you who are joining by phone only, please press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be posted on the city's web pages. All votes will be done by, by roll call vote to ensure count accuracy. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the first item on the agenda is the commission matter meeting minutes. Um, we have two sets of minutes that we have to um, that we have to accept or or not. Um, we'll take them separately only because, well, no, actually, I don't think we will have to. Um, there was an issue whether or not someone had to be in attendance in order to vote on the minutes. Yes. And I did send a uh, request into the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions to to see if they had information on that. And Sharifa attended a meeting, I believe, last night. So Sharifa, can you just let us know what it was they said? Hi, yes. So um, Michelle Grenzer stated that as long as a member members were able to read the minutes from the previous meeting, that they then could vote on the minutes. So, okay, so when we, I think there might be some confusion. I know you can't vote on an applicant if you've missed two meetings, unless you've you know, unless you've um, gone through and watched video and that kind of thing. So maybe there was confusion about that. But um, have, have all of the commissioners? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Let's do roll call first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Um, commissioners, if you could just state your first and last name. And um, that way we'll have you present for roll call vote. Laura Beekler here. Ruby Clay Peggy. here. Peggy Curtis here. Oh, hi, Peggy. And Joyce Boris is here. Okay. Thank you. And Sharifa. Sharifa Map here. Okay, so Sharifa will be a voting member tonight as opposed no. to just observing. Okay. Great. Still observing. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Okay, so as far as the meeting minutes are concerned, um, have the commissioners read both the minutes from April and May? Yes. Okay. Yes. Quick note on the agenda. The agenda stated that was it was an April 23rd meeting. I believe it was an April 19th meeting. So that agenda should just be corrected. So from the April 19th and the 23rd meeting, I entertain a motion to accept those minutes as read. I make a motion to accept the uh, meeting minutes from 4-19-23 and 5-23-23. I second the motion. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Equal aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Sharifa, we're in alphabetical order. She's not voting. Aye. And Boris, aye. Okay, the motion has been made and carried. Okay. Just for clarification, Mr. Mr. May, you said that Sharifa will be voting tonight. Is that correct? She said that she was observing today. Oh, okay. Fine. That's correct. I'm observing. Okay. Okay. Number two on the agenda um, is an emergency certification at Two Silver Road. Is uh, anyone here from the public for that? Or Mr. Holden, are you going to? Yeah, no, I was just planning on giving kind of an update uh, on okay. the board. I didn't ask anyone, uh, That's perfect. a representative to be here for this. So um, there was a storm that came through <clears throat> at the beginning of the month, knocked down a tree um, over the weekend and the following Monday, which was the 5th of June, um, I was contacted about this tree that was down. It was, uh, it was uh, over um, a driveway and three cars. Um, so the tree needed to be removed promptly. And um, so we issued an emergency certification form for Two Silver Road. Uh, the applicant was Stu Sterling. Um, the date of issue was June 5th, 
Um, and uh, basically the emergency certification allows them to do this work uh, for 30 days. They have a window where they can get this emergency work done. Um, I did drive by uh, about a week and a half ago and the, the tree had been removed. Um, so at this point, I think the commission just needs to vote and uh, certify that this was an appropriate thing to issue and that we're okay with the issuance of this emergency certification. Commissioners, any questions? I don't have any. Okay. I don't have any. Okay. Do you know if the uh, if it's actually been cleaned up? Yes, I drove by uh maybe, maybe it was monday of this of this past week um and it, it was uh it was cleaned up then okay thank you so the vote will be to verify that the emergency certification was appropriate is that correct is that what you would like as a motion i think yeah the, the commission just needs to confirm that that this was all above board and part of the due <laughs> process i think okay I make a motion to approve the emergency certification for two Silver Road. I second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded. The vote, please. Equal aye. Clay aye. Curtis aye. Boris aye. Thank you for your quick reaction, um, Kyle, to that. Uh, number, let's see, number three would be some discussions of violations. Uh, the first one at Oak Street Extension. Yes, uh, and I will speak to that one as well. Um, Olga Leroy is the uh, representative for uh, uh, um, uh, Hamilton uh, Company. Um, she called me today. She was un unable to make the meeting tonight, uh, but she did uh, want to give us an update. Um, so they are, uh, they started work on this remediation yesterday. Um, she submitted a remediation plan that I've uploaded to the drive. Um, it just get, kind of outlines all the work that's planned to be done this week. Um, and the, the end date is supposed to be uh, this Friday. So um, that's kind of where we are on this project. Um, between now and the July meeting, um, I will go out and take some pictures or have Olga take pictures and we'll confirm that this work has been done. And then the plan is that she will uh, appear before the commission on the July meeting uh, and we can close this matter out. It sounds fine. It's nice to have a violation discussion without ever having to go through enforcement order. It really has been nice that she's been so um, willing to work with the commission. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's no vote or anything required. So the next next item on the agenda would be 115 Goldfinch Drive. Okay, uh, and this is uh, a matter that we've uh, came to our attention about a month ago. Let's see if, um, if, if uh, Councilman... Uh, Councillor David Texera is in the room. I don't see him as an attendee. I did send him a, a reminder letter, Joyce, um, that the meeting was tonight and asked him. Yes, to I saw that. Oh, one hand. Jim, are you uh, associated with this? I'm going to promote you. Attorney, to see. Attorney Burke is, yes. Okay, great. Let me unmute if you hear me. Yes. No, thank yes, you. I can hear you. Thank you. Um, um, Adam, uh, uh, oh, we lost Mr. Burke. Um, he just joined as a panelist. He may have to um, unmute himself again. Unmute. Am I? Am I there? You oh, are there, you. sir. Go on. Hi, hi, Mr. Burke. Hi. You know, one thing, please, um, just for a, a note of the chair. Um, I believe we do need a summary of what it is this entire project is, you know, concerning, maybe from Agent Holden before we hear from Mr. Burke, please. Um, yes, I thought I had the map pulled up, but I don't have it handy. So um, basically a summary of, of events here is I got an anonymous report. Um, someone came into the planning department and complained that there was um, some yard work being done in the backyard of 115 uh, Goldfinch. Um, so I went out there um, after I reviewed this on the maps on Mass Mapper, and uh, there appeared to be uh, some uh, some work that was done 
over a property line. And then also as a separate issue uh, uh, within a uh, jurisdictional floodplain area and uh, in within the, the wetland buffer. Um, I do have a map, so I'm gonna look for that. Uh, and um, we did speak to uh, uh, David Texera uh, um, about this. Um, and uh, I guess that we, we requested that he come to the meeting tonight and kind of give us a summary of, of how the property developed in the way that it, that it, it currently exists. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Holden. I did see the map at one point in the file, but I didn't see it earlier today. I'll, I'll try to find it and uh, I'll share a screen if I am able to find that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burke, how are you? I'm great. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Welcome. So this, this is actually not a new item for the Conservation Commission. There are some new faces, uh, but this uh, uh, arose approximately a year and a half ago. Uh, and uh, what occurred was uh, Mr. Texera had some uh, substantial work done on his home on Goldfinch uh, and discovered uh, that he unfortunately had a contractor who had not secured all necessary permits and also had encroached upon land that is part of now Wildlands Trust. Uh, when that became known, uh, we immediately reached out to Wildlands to inform them of the unfortunate mistake. And it started a series of discussions that have been ongoing about how the best way to approach uh, the project uh, in, in terms of resolution with Wildlands as well as the necessary restoration that would be required. So uh, we've had a number of meetings and that includes meetings with Wildlands, the mayor, the, uh, the uh, city solicitor, uh, the uh, ward counselor, uh, and we have had uh, Tom Pazursky of, of Merrill who's done a substantial amount of work. Uh, the, the, the concept was that we really needed to know what the final plan was in order for Tom Pazursky and his office to create the necessary uh, remediation plan that would be submitted to the Conservation Commission. In fact, the prior conservation agent was, was uh, on this and out there in the site. And uh, we had had numerous discussions with the office going back uh, well over a year. To update you, it, we reached an agreement with Wildlands. There were a, a very, uh, receptive, uh, they, they, were, they understood that it was uh, uh, an error that uh, Mr. Texera uh, was not aware was occurring. Uh, we're very pleased that they uh, was brought to their attention directly. And there was a discussion about creating somewhat of a swap of a small portion uh, to the rear of the property to allow the structures that were built or some of the structures that were built to remain and then granting uh, substantially more in multiples uh, land to wild lands directly to the north, uh, as you can see on the plan. In fact, today I had a detailed discussion with uh, uh, David Texera, uh, and it was within his family uh, basically agreed that what they want now want to do and the message that they're going to send to uh, uh, Merrill, is that they, they are just going to remove all of the items that encroached on the uh, uh, wet uh, uh, wildlands property. And in the process, we're going to be able to have uh, Tom uh, Przerski prepare the necessary remediation plan for ultimate submission to the Conservation Commission. So uh, I, I, this is a uh, uh, a, a unfortunate long-standing issue that uh, has been around in, in front of a number of departments. In fact, it first, Mr. Texera first became aware of it when he applied for a, uh, a request for a pool construction, and it was discovered that the problem had occurred. So what you have, unfortunately, uh, is a, a difficult set of circumstances that have not been ignored. Uh, by the uh, the property owner. Substantial expense has already incurred in the process of getting this to the point of being remediable. remediable. Uh, and in fact, as of today's current decision, we now have a final determination of what the uh, plan is going to be going forward. So that's probably the best and clearest update that I can give you at this point. 
All right. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, so I've shared my screen with the uh, site plan here. Um, so this uh, line here is the, the property line um, that Jim was uh, discussing there. The, the land over here to the right of the screen is the area that's owned by Wildlands Trust. Um, and then um, <clears throat> the uh, these other colored lines on the map are the resource areas that, that were kind of encroached upon uh, here as well. So this pink line is an estimated uh, wetland delineation. This blue line was delineated wetland. Um, and then this green line is the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, and then again, it's just kind of an estimated buffer zone through this portion because this pink line is not, has not been delineated. And then this orange line through here is the uh, flood zone, um, looks like flood zone A. So um, all of this stuff here, uh, this is a retaining wall here. Um, and then this is kind of part of the patio back here. So all of these things are kind of within a, a resource area of the commission here. So. Um, so this is kind of, uh, Jim, in my mind, this is kind of two separate issues. There's the uh, there's the the property line dispute with wildlands, and then there's also the uh, the building uh, within resource area that needs to be addressed. I agree, uh, and and uh, we uh, now are really just focused uh, on the uh, uh, resource issues because uh, an 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 understanding or a decision has been made that uh, there's going to be a removal of. Uh, all encroaching structures. So uh, really, uh, once that is done uh, and uh, we provide you with a plan of how we're going to do it and provide you with a plan of what it's going to look like after we uh, finish it uh, and get your permission to do it, that's how we're going to proceed. Yeah, that seems uh, reasonable to me. So uh, one thing that I would uh, wish to include, Jim, just so it's on your radar, uh, and I've talked to Joyce about this, and we'll see what the rest of the commission says. But one thing is we would like the rest of this uh, wetland boundary to be actually delineated so we know what we're actually working with there. And we spoke to uh, Mr. Uh, Texera about that as well when Joyce and I did a site visit uh, earlier this month. That seems um, reasonable. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, you get the wetland boundary delineated. And then, uh, as you have already mentioned, you're going to be working on a, on a, a remediation plan. Yes, correct. Yeah, great. Um, Madam Chair, uh, we discussed uh, last week with uh, our kind of advisors from Beta about um, potentially voting to issue an enforcement order yes. just to kind of put all this in writing uh, tonight. Yes. Is that something that you're interested in? I certainly believe it should be done just to make sure that since there are resource areas that have been infringed upon, I do think that um, an enforcement order is, is necessary. Um, his response, the, the way that Mr. Tixera responds to the um, enforcement order should certainly lead to him being able to apply for an NOI and, and to get a permit to be able to do that remediation work. Well, I, I'd actually rather, Madam uh, Chairperson, uh, ask that you don't issue an enforcement order. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I understand uh, and you understand what the facts are on the ground. Uh, but an enforcement order is a message that doesn't need to be sent here. Uh, what we have done is we spent substantial amount of money uh, and a great deal of attention uh, to resolve an unfortunate situation, and we are in the process of completing that. Uh, I, I, quite frankly, I, I, I think given the circumstances and the applicant to be, I think an enforcement order is uh, unnecessary at this point. And I'd ask the uh, Conservation Commission to consider not doing it and maybe suspending your vote for 60 days and see where we're at. Commissioners, do you have any thoughts on the matter that you might want to share? I have a question. Thank you, Peggy. Um, when uh, when was the uh, property purchased? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the uh, the answer to that. Uh, I can I can and will find that out for you, and I'll submit it to uh, Kyle. Um, if we don't do um, an enforcement order, um, how would we go about presenting this? the remediation that needs to be done. Well, with. well it would be, an, as Kyle knows, it would be a simple uh, uh, request for determination, you, accepting the line, uh, and a request to be allowed to do work uh, within the uh, the buffer zone. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and uh, we would need the permission of the, the board to do that. We'd explain exactly what we intend to do uh, and secure an order of, of conditions allowing us to do the work. So you're I believe suggesting that, filing for a notice of intent for- I believe the, a notice of intent, I think, is appropriate here, Jim. Yes, yeah, that, that's exactly it. I'm, I'm sorry my, my terminology there, was off. There's a, there's a lot there. No, I get it. Yeah. Um, do we have the, the representative from Beta available? I, I just, I'm not sure about the intricacies of, of enforcement, the use of enforcement. Hi, Madam Chair, this is uh, John Hero. Hi, Jonathan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I'm a project scientist from Beta Group filling in uh, for Elise this week while she's gone. Um, so just a couple things on the enforcement order matter. So, you know, certainly two sides here. Uh, on one hand, an enforcement order, um, does document these things more formally in a, you know, sort of a legal document uh, that leaves a formal paper trail of these sort of violations. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, if the applicant does intend to file a notice of intent, I have seen, you know, after the fact notices of intent filed um, for projects after receiving a written notice of violation. Um, however, what I've also seen is enforcement, a combination of the two, which is enforcement orders issued uh, to document something, uh, leave a paper trail, but then have a, a condition in the enforcement order that simply states that, you know, upon the applicant um, securing an order of uh, conditions approving the project, <clears throat> that the enforcement order is lifted. Um, I think in this case, you know, perhaps before issuing an enforcement order, you could maybe set a timeline. You know, I know. Uh, 60 days was mentioned um, by the applicant's representative. And then at that point, um, see if a notice of intent is submitted or ready to be submitted and make a decision at that point. Um, I don't have the history that the commission does on this project, but it is possible since they have received a formal written violation that they could get you know, a defined timeline on, on when this notice of intent needs to come in and then go from there. Um. Kyle, the letter, the letter that you sent um, to Ms. Texera, I, I don't know how formal it was as far as stipulating exactly what it was that he needed to do. Um, no, I just asked him to, uh, to either attend himself or have a representative come to the meeting mm -hmm. tonight, speak of the history of the property. And then I did mention in, in the letter that an enforcement order was on the table tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't say that it was certainly going to happen. Um, just kind of wanted to prepare uh, for that eventuality. But there was no formal list of like a violation per se, as far as what the violations were. Uh, no, I didn't didn't go into that. Commissioners? Yeah, my opinion is we would submit, we should submit a formal letter maybe in writing, just indicating what each violation is and then um, compromise a little bit with the timeline and say within the next 30 days, we um, hear back um, with the NOI um, that shows us what type of progress because it's not a new case in the sense that the backyard has been discussed before, maybe not in the specific area, um, to make sure that we continue to act in a way of compliance. I think that we do have to use a lens that says you have 30 days to respond with an NOI. And then we can also just make sure we issue a letter that indicates everything that is in current concern with the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Certainly the, the delineation, I would think, uh, mm -hmm. within 30 days and then maybe within 60 days in NOI. I would yeah. agree. 30 I days agree. is reasonable to show some kind of progress. 60 days yeah. is too long, um, especially since this is not the first time it's been on the table. So I think a 30-day marker to see their progress is being made and then follow up afterwards. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Kyle, will you draft a letter to Mr. Texera just outlining what those violations are with a request? Yes, I can do that. With a request for delineation, wetlands delineation, mm -hmm. as well as an NOI. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh Jim and I will uh, in I'll include you. I think I've got your contact information. So you do. Okay. Yep. And perhaps with the understanding that if after 30 days there is no activity, perhaps at that point an enforcement order would be immediately um issued. Okay. Be fair. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. 
So do we need to make a motion? No, it's not. A, it's it's a violation discussion. It's not. There's no votes necessary. Okay. And when is our next meeting? It's in. Um, it's July. July 19th. July 19th. So we'll see them back on July 19th. Or at least the the the. I will can inform the commission that the delineation has in fact occurred, um, and then on the the following meeting we would. Uh, yeah, perhaps a, we could a, see a copy of that delineation and yeah, mm -hmm. that would be lovely. And uh, yeah, because I didn't see any markers at all um, when we went out to the property. I really didn't see any wetland markers even. So it was really difficult um, to assess what was there. Okay. Is that it for that, for Goldfinch? Resolve? Yes, so. Okay, good. On to the next um, item on the agenda is 155 Winthrop Street. Uh, yeah, so uh, just a little bit of backstory on this. Actually, you know, Jim, I'm going to, uh, yes, I'm not sure you. if you're sticking around, but I'm going to. I am back. Butler Matter. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Take care. Um, Thank you. Thank you for attending. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Oops. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, uh, whoever did that. Um, okay, so uh, 155 Winthrop. Um, this is a matter that came before the commission last month. Um, and uh, no, did, no, I think I maybe issued the violation notice. Let's see, um, I sent this on the 23rd. So I think this was the same day uh, as the meeting last, last month. So uh, in the meantime, uh, this family, um, there is a, a, a language barrier here uh, that the commission should be aware of. Um, they came in um, after I did a site visit. Um, I got their permission, spoke to them the day that I went out to the site. Basically, what they have done is they, they've, they've paved their entire backyard, uh, and the backyard abuts um, uh, an intermittent stream, um, and, they, and they've paved it with asphalt basically all the way back to their property line. Um, so uh, we've, we've talked <clears throat> to them and asked them to come before the commission tonight. Uh, they followed up and came into the planning department, and I spoke with them with with uh, uh, the assistance of one of our employees up on, in the building department who speaks Spanish. Um, and um, we talked about them coming to the meeting tonight. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have anyone here that, that can serve as translator for, for this discussion. Uh, so I did send another letter last week to them informing them that uh, if they could come tonight and provide their own translator, that would be very welcome. But otherwise, uh, we can have a discussion here as a board and I will We'll go out uh, and, and set up a meeting with them sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks here and kind of inform them as to kind of where we are with this. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone is in the public uh, room here for to, to speak to 155 Winthrop. If you could raise your hand, please, if you are. What is the last name of the applicant? I see someone named Jui has their hand up. Okay, all right, move to panelists. It's Fenton, uh, Mr. May. I have a overall question. What is the city ruling on uh, paving an entire yard? Because I know in Randolph, that's not permitted. Um, and it ha all driveways have to be inspected by an inspector before they get paid. Um, so I was just curious what the ruling is in the city of Brockton so, with regards to paving. Yeah, to that, Peggy, um, I'm not quite sure. As far as we're concerned, um, Brockton does have a 25 foot setback um, from riverfront area. And so because they're within that 25 foot area, uh, this is a, a matter that's within jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, Mr. Holden, I could just briefly say, um, while we do not require a, um, an inspection or a permit to build the driveway, there is a certain amount of land. And in the case of residential, it's usually about 65% of the property has to stay open. So you couldn't 100% cover your property. Okay. And is that something that that's through the building department? Uh, through the zoning ordinance. That? And it's enforced by the building department. Or if it's excessive paving, uh, it would be the uh, city engineer through the stormwater ordinance. Okay. 
so we may need to kind of expand this and, and include some other uh, other departments here as well. Uh, you have a, um, and I'm going to mispronounce the name. Excuse me. Jui. Jui. Hi. Uh, yes. Hello. Here she is. Hi, Jui. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm using my friend's computer, but my name is Julie. I don't know why they chose that. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I have here the owner of the house. I'm gonna help her translate, um, just because, like you said before, there's a language barrier. So this is our first time, well, my first time um, doing this kind of meeting thing. So I don't know, like, do you ask me questions and I ask her or how does it work? <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, um, I guess I will uh, start um, here, but yes, we'll give you uh, time to then translate uh, as we kind of ask direct questions, but I'm going to give a little bit more background information. So on... Um, Let's see, uh, May 23rd is when I sent the initial uh, notice of violation. And that's all that we've done so far with this uh, with this project property is a notice of violation. And as part of that, um, we requested that the uh, the homeowners um, not complete their fence. They were putting up a new fence around the new uh, paved area. Uh, there are two fences that, that go along the, the, the property lines that abut their neighbors. And then there's another fence uh, along the brook. And we asked them to not complete the, uh, the fence along the yeah. brook just in case there was additional work that needed to be done. Um, and then we just asked them uh, to attend the meeting tonight. And that's the extent of my communication and my expectations as the agent uh, towards uh, this property owner. So and I guess it's open Julie, to the commission now uh, to- Give Julie a chance to tell that information oh, sure. to the Well, yeah, owner. well, she, she, does, um, she does understand that because she did mention about putting a fence and because I guess there's like a pond behind her house. And she did say that she wasn't um, gonna do it because I guess she was told not to. So yes, she is aware of all of that. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. So, Mr. Holden, what are your um, what what were your recommendations for um, for uh, Benton as far as remediation or, or further action? What Okay, so so like I mentioned kind of before, uh, the city of Brockton has a 25 foot setback, but it sounds like there's more than just that that needs to be addressed here. So um, considering what Mr. May informed us about uh, with the, the zoning uh, board being involved with the uh, 60 foot or 60% of the, uh, the property being open, um, I feel like at this point we need to reach out to these other, uh, uh, you know, uh, boards and the departments uh, to see what kind of requirements they would require to get all this back in compliance, because I would hate to issue one set of instructions from the commission and then have them get a separate instructions uh, from another uh, department later on that has them do additional work. I think ideally here they could do all the work uh, and get everything in compliance at once rather than just doing it piecemeal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Dice que va a llamar a muchas personas, o sea, él antes de darte una violación, él quiere asegurarse que otros departamentos vengan y vean si es que algo, está, algo más está mal ¿sí? y ellos te van a dejar saber, pero él no te quiere dar una violación ahora y luego enterarse que algo, mal está, algo más está mal y luego tener que llamar a alguien, ¿sí? entonces es lo que va a ser, es lo que ve. So, ok, so I just translated that for her. Uh -huh. Mr. Holden, Mr. Nero, would you recommend that uh, wetland scientists go out there to evaluate the wetland portion or perhaps through contract with beta as part of their services to actually evaluate the wetland section of that so that we know what we're dealing with as far as wetlands? Yeah, Madam Chair, um, this is John Nero here. Um, so, you know, we, we'd be happy to, um, you know, assess the site at some point on, on behalf of the city, um, but obviously, you know, if, if the applicant is going to go forward with any kind of application, they would need to retain uh, their own respective representation. Um, but I think at this point, what could be done is, you know, thinking about what Kyle said, getting one set of directions, um, you wouldn't oh, yeah. want to go ahead and have something permitted and then find out it's not compliant with the zoning ordinance. So I think perhaps, you know, maybe an internal meeting uh, with Kyle and say the building commissioner to figure out what is even permittable here from a land use perspective 
Um, and then at that point, once that's conveyed to the potential applicant, um, you know, instruct them at that point to say file a, a notice of intent um, and a potential restoration plan for any portion that may need to get removed. A chequear, mm -hmm. pero van a ver si es que van a tener una junta internal o sea, para ver qué pasa. Pero lo, lo que él quiere hacer primero es venir, chequear, observar qué es lo que falta, cómo son las cosas antes de hacer cualquier cosa. Ok. Commissioners, do you have any questions, comments? I agree with the um, plan to work with the other the zoning board building commission to come up with one plan to just get everything ironed yeah. out completely and do we um set a uh, time for them to meet back with us in 30 days to uh, is that enough time for all of these departments to meet and come up with a plan in the summer uh, uh Peggy, uh, um, I think that um, 30 days it would certainly be enough time for me to at least meet with uh, the representatives from the zoning board and the building department to kind of determine um, what we may not have a plan together by the end of like by the July meeting, but we can at least uh, be moving in that direction. So I think maybe um, at the July meeting, I can give you an update as far as where those three kind of different interests lie, and then we can uh, advise the applicant or the potential applicant um, what their next uh, moves should be. Okay, that sounds fair. Laura? Okay, Ruby? Um, before we uh, close okay. this matter out, Madam Chair, um, uh, Julie, um, would, would the best way to uh, be in communication with the applicant be through letters in the mail or, or would there be a better way for me to communicate um, with them about this matter going forward? Um, let me ask her. So, dice que si la manera, la mejor manera de comunicarse ellos contigo es por teléfono o quieres que te mande así cartas por correo? Cartas, diga, por favor. Okay, she said if you could please send out letters in the mail. Okay, absolutely. We can do that. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion at all? Okay, thank you very much, Julie, for participating and Persisting, Ms. Fenton. Thank you. Very neighborly. Thank you. thank you. Really. And thank you, Ms. Fenton, too, for helping us with the wildlands, with the, uh, I'm sorry, with the wildlands protection. Thank you. Um, for the record, Kyle, I am going to make you host of the meeting. Okay. Okay. And that just affects the Zoom settings. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda of violation discussions is 26 Allen Street. Yes, and I have an update for this one as well. The applicant I, or um, uh, the representative for this property, I do not believe is at the meeting. I did not uh, require her to be here. Um, so basically this is um, the property that's uh, abutting Salisbury Brook and it was just full of debris and, and there was some dumping that had occurred there. Uh, we sent out a violation notice and uh, they had intended to clean this property up. I got a call from um, uh, uh, Cynthia, uh, the daughter of the property owner. Um, she's kind of facilitating communication uh, with us. And uh, she uh, informed me that the cleanup had been done. So I went out there uh, to check out the property. Uh, and unfortunately, it's just completely uh, overgrown with uh, Japanese knotweed. And um, it looks great because you can't see any of the debris and the, 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 the stuff that's still there. But I, I walked back in there and uh, there's still uh, uh, just a, an assortment of different items and trash and things back there. So um, after talking with Elise Tripp from Beta, I, I think that we decided that what my suggestion is um, we don't necessarily want the app or the, the the owner to be going in there and clearing any of this this vegetation out to to get to all this debris that needs to be removed. Um, so we decided that maybe a, a a good path forward would be to kind of table all of this until the fall um, when the vegetation has a chance to die back naturally um, and it will expose all of this debris and stuff in there, and then we can get the work done um, in like this winter or early spring. So um, that's kind of what I've communicated uh, to. Uh, the the property owner um and uh, uh, i guess that's just kind of up for the commission's uh 
yeah, I'm open for input there. Um, but then we'll just kind of continue on if that's, a, a, you know, is amenable to everyone here. So there hasn't actually been any disturbance as far as any change or anything, any alteration to the to the resource areas. It's a that's matter correct. Of stuff it's it's just there. it's just kind of been uh, there's been some dumping and just different uh, miscellaneous trash and, and things that are around brush piles and so forth. So. Okay. And Mr. Nero, that's that's outside of the purview of of um, wetlands protection, correct? No, it's within the um, the buffer area, um, Madam Chair, um, of the of the Salisbury Brook. So it's it's within jurisdiction. But dumping is, I mean, it's it doesn't have to be changes in the actual land itself. That's correct. I mean, depending on you know the nature of of yeah. the materials, I mean, it's it's an activity and a degradation of a jurisdictional area, especially if it's things like uh, you know televisions containing mercury yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that was my question. There. Yeah, one Are there could say any like there. cans of paint or anything like that. Oh, yeah. okay. um, so we don't know if there's any cans of paint or oil yeah. or any kind um, so of. So I can, I can. There, there is a large television that's been dumped back there, amongst other just miscellaneous debris and trash and, and things. Like it was clearly a dumping site. Uh, there are pictures posted on the uh, on the Google Drive. Um, if you guys, if the commission is interested in, in kind of checking out some of these pictures that, that I took before the foliage really kind of filled out, so you can kind of see what what I'm talking about there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since there can't be any immediate action right now, there's no reason to send out an enforcement order. So what you're proposing is to um, Resend just, a violation notice with a request that it be performed that they work be performed in the fall or late fall, early winter. Yeah, I can I can certainly send out a letter that kind of formalizes all of this. But yeah, that's kind of the thought process. We will kind of uh, circle back to this uh, in in the late fall, um, and where where work can actually be done without further sure. degrading the the resource area. Perhaps we could say that you could take another visit, perhaps in December, and if it is not attended to at that point, we could send out an enforcement order. Would that be fair? Yes, that, I think that would be fair. Um, you know, the only thing with enforcement order in this case is like you had alluded to, it is, it is buffer zone. Um, however, it is still, you know, active dumping is an unpermitted activity within any jurisdiction. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think that would that would send a clear message that you know it it should be cleaned up um, at the agreed upon time frame. Commissioners, I like the idea that just following up by December, by then it should be back enough, and if there was something wrong, we would know. But yeah, I think not. We not we dies back by December. I think yeah, as long as it's not too warm. So yeah, I agree. I don't think they should do anything right now just because there is a lot going on. Well, I'm a little bothered by the fact that we gave them the um, the order, and then they just went until there was foliage covering it, and just basically ignored the order. Well, the, I think the car is gone. I mean, they did get rid of the car. car right? It was like a, a broken down car that looks like they did clean that up. Um, I think that the car is still. Uh parked on the north side of the property. I'm not sure that they've okay. moved that or not, uh, Laura. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think, so it wasn't an, an enforcement order that was initial initially sent out anyway. Yeah, we sent a notice of violation. Notice violation, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think to, uh, yeah, to go back with, with question. Do another, yes, go ahead, Peggy. Um, I noticed that the last name I believe is Greek. Did we send it in another language um, or language in which they um, would understand? So I've been in communication with, uh, so the applicant, or not the applicant, but the, the property owner is Paul Sarophilus, I believe the last name is pronounced. Um, I've been in contact with his daughter who's kind of facilitating communication. Uh, so I've spoken to her on the phone and she's the one that I'm kind of emailing about this currently. Okay, thank you. So we, we'll expect to see an uh, a, a violation, a, a follow-up letter with a request for action by December. And if that action does not occur, then an enforcement order will be issued at that time. Is that? Sure, sounds good, you know? thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. 
what's next? Keep losing my agenda. Uh, we are on agenda item number four, enforcement orders. Enforcement orders. These are the real ones. Okay, the first one is at 19 Otis Street. The uh, and again, Perfect. just another update here. So we issued the enforcement order on April 27th. Um, a representative uh, for the property owner came to the meeting um, last month and requested that, um, because there's a, a language barrier here as well, um, that we set up a, an in-person meeting to kind of go over the enforcement order and what uh, actions are required of the property owner by the commission. Um, so after the meeting in May, I went out and uh, met with the property owner and I had uh, someone from the building department to help facilitate translation. And uh, we just kind of went over um, what the language in the enforcement order is, uh, what steps need to be taken to start this remediation um, with the eventual plan to uh, have them file after the fact NOI uh, with, uh, with, you know, with, the, with an appropriate um, plan uh, to, to kind of remediate that area impacted by uh, the, the building over the property line abutting uh, the brook there. So um, that's kind of where we are with this. Um, so my thought is, uh, uh, we can. I'll follow up with them for the July meeting, and hopefully the applicant or the, the property owner will have um, have will have had time uh, to put together a plan um, and have something for us by the July meeting. Okay. Certainly, at least the survey and and a plan. I would think. Yeah. Yes, and and, and uh, Madam Chair, we discussed maybe sending out uh, in the in the interim uh, like a follow up letter just to kind of express that uh, expectation uh, by the commission that, that they come to the meeting in July with some sort of actionable item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions at all? Yeah. Uh, Ruby? Hello? No? No, none. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Carl. Seems you can get that letter into the file as well. That would be great. Yep. Um, let's see, enforcement order. The second one is Ames Street, 82 Ames Street. Yes, and this is a property that we've historically had uh, enforcement orders, have, they've been issued over the past years. Um, and so this is a property that's kind of been on our radar of the commission for quite a while. I issued the most recent enforcement order on May 22nd, um, and that was so close to the uh, to the to the main meeting, we right. re requested that the, uh, the the property owner uh, come to the June meeting uh, to discuss uh, the uh, the enforcement order and um, all actions have been taking place on the property. Um, I'm not sure if anyone from uh, a representative for 82 Ames is here, so I, I see uh, Bob Rigo. Mm -hmm. Okay, going to promote him. Okay, I promoted Bob to panelist. Hi, Bob, you are muted. Um, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, the rest of the commission. Uh, my name is Bob Rigo. I'm with Riverhawk Environmental. Um, I represent the uh, the client, the landowner, Robert Tukamanian. Um, I, I think he was supposed to be present also at tonight's um, meeting. I don't know if you see his hand raised or he's available. I do see him, yep. Yep, he'd probably be best to promote also as a panelist. He can he can uh, fill you in better about the the history and 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 how we got here and and maybe I can That's add. Great. Um, That's great. Thank you. Tukmanian, you're muted, I believe. Hello. Hi. Hi, Thank how's you it going? Good evening. So I am the property owner and um, I'm here to answer any questions you guys may have. Uh, if you want, I can give you a summary from our perspective of what's going on with the property. Uh, yes, please. Let me know what you'd like me to address. A summary would be lovely. Thank you. Yeah. So um, originally, when we purchased the property, I believe it was in August of 2020, 
uh, it was partially partially paved and um, overgrown land. Uh, we, per we own the, the building abutting this parcel and um, we purchased it kind of with the intention of cleaning it up and you know using it with our building. Um, when we first purchased it, we retained Bob Rigo from River Rock Environmental. We pretty much had a phase one report done and checked for any wetlands or any vegetation of that nature. Uh, we noticed that there weren't any. We contacted the, the building department and asked if it was possible to clear the land. The building department said that there were no permits required and we can go ahead and clear any vegetation we want. Uh, especially, you know, the fact that we went the extra step and made sure that there's no wetlands or anything like that. Uh, we thought we were pretty safe to clear it. For years, people had been dumping garbage uh, on the parcel. So one of the first things we did was pretty much uh, clean up all the debris, the garbage, uh, TVs. There was a lot of heroin needles and junk all over the property. So we cleaned everything up. We tried to shape up the land. Um, and then that's when we, I believe, re received our first um, uh, notice from the Conservation Commission for the land clearing activity. So we went to the initial meetings. I believe it was Megan Shave. Mm -hmm. um, at the time. So we were in touch with her. Um, we had some open communication with her. We set up erosion barriers around uh, the drainage channel on the property. And as soon as we received those letters, we pretty much put a stop to all the work. Uh, we had only cleared the corner of the parcel that wraps around Spark Street and Ames Street. Uh, the larger section of it, we really didn't touch. Um, so uh, after that, um, we pretty much have been going back and forth with the Conservation Commission. Um, I believe they requested us to file a notice of intent. We submitted a notice of intent, I think, in December of 2021. And then um, it was an after the fact notice of intent um, because there was some clearing that we did. Um, the notice of intent was for using the corner of the parcel as a parking lot, which required it to be paved. So um, I believe we did stormwater design. Uh, Bob Rigo would know exactly what we submitted with the notice of intent. Um, and then after that, uh, Bob Rigo was injured and there was a couple delays with the meetings, which is why we missed two of the meetings. We did keep in touch with Megan Shave and uh, attempted to reschedule a couple times, but uh, I believe we just got carried away. And um, that brings us to this point right now. So there were a couple of reports that there was ongoing uh, unpermitted uh, ground clearing after um, the fact and recently too. We have not touched the parcel or anything like that of that nature. We haven't done any work or any groundwork in the last probably, I don't know, two years. Um, that's where we stand. On the corner of the parcel, uh, there was a gravel lot that we rented out. At this point right now, we evicted the tenant. They removed all the vehicles that they were parking in there. And uh, pretty much we dismantled that commercial, that parking lot. Uh, that's where we stand. Uh, we have no intention of doing any work at this moment. If we are uh, gonna proceed forward with the commercial parking lot, and the, then I guess we will file the notice of intent or do whatever is required uh, by the book. Mr. Chukamanian, when, uh, when was it that you asked the, um, the tenants to, to leave that area? So the eviction of the tenants was an ongoing one. We probably reached out to them, I wanna say six months back and actively we were uh, trying to get them out. Um, the building department, George DePina reached out to us uh, the tenant we signed a lease agreement with was supposed to follow the local ordinance uh, to obtain proper permitting for his business, uh, to use it for parking of the uh, tow, as a tow lot. George DePina reached out pretty much because they were violating the ordinance. They didn't have an occupancy permit. So we worked with George DePina and um, we, we pretty much evicted the tenants. Um, and that was a lengthy process because we had to get court orders and, and do everything by the book. We couldn't just enter the premises and take possession. But the tenant at this point is now fully moved out. Okay, thank you, that's an interesting story.
yeah, it, it's it's been a long process, and um, yeah. we're just trying to correct it. Our initial goal was just to shape up the area and clean it because people have been using it as a dumping ground for years, if not decades. Um, I have pictures of of the dumpsters of trash that we pulled out of there, but um, we just want to shape it up now that the tenant has has vacated. Uh, you know, we're here to pretty much clean that corner up and shape it up. Uh, we own other property in the city of Brockton too. Uh, the most recent one that we had a project with was on North Cary Street. It was the old basement technologies building, the blue metal building. Uh, we shaped that up, we cleaned it up and uh, it's a very clean property now. We kind of want to do something similar here, start by you know landscaping it, cleaning mm -hmm. it up and you know, turn it into a nice, nice commercial property instead of being overgrown and run down. And when you say that you did clearing activity, does that mean removing lots of trees and things like that? Um, the only vegetation that was there was pretty, it was mostly um, just overgrown weeds. Um, there was some Japanese knotweed there. We pretty much just just maintained it and landscaped the area because it was it was very run down, uh, overgrown. We didn't alter the soil. We didn't, um, you know, we didn't pave anything. Um, I believe we spread some gravel for the lot in the corner, but that area was already partially paved um, in the past and people, vehicles were using it to cut through from Spark Street to Ames Street. So it was a partially paved area and then um, we filled that corner with, with gravel. But other than that, we didn't alter, uh, alter anything else over there. What is the zoning for this property? It's industrial two zoning. And what is industrial two? In regards to, it's I-2 zoning. I-2. Okay. Yeah. What does the two mean? Well, they have different, um, they have I-1 and I-2, uh, industrial one, industrial two, industrial three. I believe as you go up the numbers, I think it's he more heavier industrial. So just um, I-2 is right in the middle. And your sole purpose for purchasing the property is to clean it up and resell it? We own the, the, the commercial building uh, directly abutting it, 74 Ames Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an opportunity to purchase the land behind us. Uh, mm -hmm. We purchased it because our property had no parking uh, and then it was a budding parcel. And uh, we, we just had the opportunity to purchase it. So we decided to move forward with it in 2020. And that building is, is a realty company, no? Uh, nope. Just the seven, the per, the building that we own is just a warehouse building. We use it for storage of equipment. It's just cold storage. We're not looking to you know create a problem with the city. You know we want to clean it up. Um, we're willing to do whatever it is to correct the issue. Um, it just I believe it's just been miscommunication uh, this last year or two. Uh, mm -hmm. We were on a, a good track with uh, Megan Shave uh, when we filed the notice of intent in 2021. And then I think things just kind of got delayed and and a couple, you know, uh, events came up with Bob Rigo getting hospitalized. And I think everything got, it just got put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that's where we are right now. I hope you're better, Mr. Rigo. You look lovely. Sorry, I, I broke my leg pretty badly. So I just I ended up getting plates and screws and stuff in there, but, but I'm oh. good now. So thank you very much. Good. So just to, to add, um, you know, the area that, that in question, it's, a, it's an area subject to flooding. So it's an A flood zone um, with an undetermined flood elevation. So, so that's, that's the area of concern. There's no wetland vegetation or anything in the, in the area. Of, of the of the fill it it is a, a wetland resource area though in that it's a, a land sub, uh, area subject to flooding so is there a nearby river that would be flooding where is it um yeah there's a there's a um culverted river which extends 
a few miles to the to the west and comes across the site. Um, the, the, on the on the screen now, you can see that the light green area. Our site's at the corner of uh, Ames Street, right there, exactly. Right. And um, that's an A zone, so there's an undetermined elevation of, of flood there. But as you move further to the east, that that blue section is a AE zone with a determined flood elevation. Uh -huh. So there's a there's an intermittent stream which runs uh, along that area and, and and heads further south. Okay. Thank you. And it is just a corner of that land, huh? That corner of that parcel. Well, and, and uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, um, I'll kind of present to you uh, some pictures that, that I took this spring. So um, as as the uh, uh, the two gentlemen here have expressed, uh, 97 Ames is the warehouse that they were speaking about. This is the lot okay. on the corner that they were talking right. about that has been paved. Um, the concern, I think, here is there's, a, there's kind of a, a ditch, an open ditch that runs here on the property. Um, and you can kind of see that there very kind of barely on the on the satellite view. Let me see. Oh, gosh, everything's uh, just to clarify, uh, Kyle, you said that the the corner lot was paved. It, it isn't paved. It's uh, it's a gravel area. OK. We yeah, we never paved the lot. All right. Uh, but that, and that, that but that lot area is on, on this photo is, is the area that's behind the fence. Um, but the the, the, the the complaint that I got this spring was about clearing that was done here and on this side of the that this is that little ditch that I was showing on the satellite. Um, so you can see there there's been some work done here. Um, this is a, another photo of the the ditch that comes kind of right through that property. So yeah, that uh, this is what the complaint was about this spring. Um, and uh, I did look at some other uh, photos that Megan had taken over uh, over the the, court, the history that this property has kind of been on her radar. And it looks like some very similar work has, has been done around the same time in, in the year, uh, springtime, April, May, um, last year, and maybe even the year before. So um, that's that's what the enforcement order that, that I issued uh, this year was pertaining to, not not the, uh, uh, the graveled uh, parking lot area. Is there any particular reason why there was, was there an NOI filed at one point to be able to do this work? So there, there was, sorry. No, go no, ahead, go ahead Bob. You might be able to speak. To oh, I can apologize. Name. Yeah, so so the gravel was placed in that in that parking area that, that Kyle just uh, outlined. And um, we, we did submit a notice of intent after the fact, notice of intent for that gravel parking area, which one of the things that came about was that parking areas in the city had to be paved. So we were proposing to pave that with bituminous concrete and then provide um, stormwater um, controls for that area. Um, so we show a rain garden in that front corner of the property at the corner of Ames Street. Um, that is when, during that process, that's when I broke my leg and missed a couple of the meetings. Um, we did get, I believe it was beta that, that offered a comment letter on our stormwater. So there were some uh, modifications that, that did need to be um, conducted in order to make that happen. And is there any particular reason why you wouldn't go forward now? I'm, I'm unsure. I, just, I, I guess the intention would be to, because you did have to evict the client and, and you know whether they're still going to have that project and have that corner of the lot in the in the same fashion, you know, uh, with the, with the gra gravel or or a paved parking lot for for parking of cars. So Robert, do, do you have a, a, a? So yeah, let me step in for a minute. So the reason why um, we originally uh, put together the notice of intent to create the parking lot and pave it was because um, the use that the tenant had was. Uh, as a commercial parking lot was required to be paved. So that's why we propose those plans. Now that the tenant is evicted and there is no active business and there is no active commercial parking lot there, we kind of put that on a hold. So right now we're not really moving forward with that. Um, but if we do, we'd be willing to, you know, go through the proper channels, put a notice of intent um, because that, that area or that corner of the lot isn't being utilized right now. It's just vacant. The building department uh, reached out to us and they were the ones requesting uh, per the zoning code that it be paved as a commercial lot, which is why we just started doing the stormwater design and everything to move forward with that. 
but there is no more tenant anymore. It's, it's been vacated. And so, so the go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the disturbed area, does that need to be um, remediated? So the area that was cleared, uh, when we first purchased the property, I reached out to see if I needed a land clearing permit or something. And um, even for the fence posts, uh, the chain link fence for the lot, I reached out to the billing department. Uh, at the time, they told me you don't need any, uh, any, any permits to, to erect the chain link fence and you don't need a permit to clear the land. So that's why we cleared it. Um, especially being that there's no wetlands, we didn't think it was a question of concern. Um, so we were that just photo, landing the property. That photo that, that photo that showed, it looked like a stream that was going through the property. Yeah, can I, can I discuss that quickly too? Mm -hmm. So somewhere in the process, we also filed an ANRAD for, right. for the property. Um, uh, the, the ANRAD identified that there was a, a um, land subject to flooding in the front portion of the property. Um, along the way, the, the, the prior agent um, put put the concept out that that was a, um, a riverfront, that that area represents riverfront area. Um, we, we were somewhat in um, going back and forth with her and in trying to determine whether it was truly a riverfront area. Um, the, the, the river that leads to that or the intermittent stream which leads to that is fully culverted. So if you look at a map, you don't see a river that leads to that um, section across uh, Robert's property. Um, it, it goes from a, a culvert which has a closed top to a stone lined channel, which I believe is just a continuation of the culvert. There's no wetland vegetation along the sides of it. It's it's a it's a it's a stone lined bottom and sides um, culvert which crosses the property and then goes underneath Ames Street. It it um, goes subsurface again and is underneath. So it's only that section behind Mr. Tukmanian's existing building to the west and then across the property um, there. So. Um, our contention was that it's just an extension of the culvert and not a wetland resource area because um, it's culverted. Um, but, but again, the, 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 the prior agent did have a difference of opinion uh, with that. Hmm. And did you uh, I would be interested to hear if Jonathan has any, um, anything to, to, to say yeah. about uh, Good idea. what yeah, uh, um, that like, if I'm not, um, you know, familiar with this property in particular, um, but considering the fact that, you know, there was a violation considered on this property, I'm assuming, as, as was just discussed, the previous agent found it jurisdictional. Um, you know, if it is an intermittent stream, it does not have riverfront area. Um, however, a stream flowing through a culvert, um, you know, may preclude it from having riverfront area if it flows through a culvert at least 200 feet in length. However, a stream flowing through a culvert is still a stream. Um, so if it does daylight or continues to flow through a culvert, if it's a culverted portion of an intermittent stream, it would still be afforded uh, buffer zone. Um, so my best guess at piecing this together here, based on what I'm hearing, is that the previous agent did find that as a violation since land was cleared within the buffer zone. Um, so there would need to be a filing for that. Uh, can, I, can I add some some things? So th th that stream, that that channel, that culvert is not shown on any uh, USGS maps at all. It doesn't appear. It doesn't appear on historic maps from the, the early 1900s. It doesn't appear on the most current one as intermittent stream or as perennial stream. Right. So that, um, that wouldn't determine jurisdiction, though, in the field. Um, no, I know it doesn't. So but but just furthermore, there's so the, to the to the west of it, there's no there's no defined stream. It's it's a series of drainage um, structures and piping. So it's it that leads to an open portion of that a continuation of that drainage thing. And then now, the 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 prior um, enforcement orders had to do with work within a land subject to flooding, it, it, and not, not not along the jurisdiction of that of that stream which 
I, I believe at least. Um, so, so just you know, you know, but but we would investigate it and 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 for and it, also when you run stream stats, it's still a um, it, it doesn't show up as a, as a um, as a as a perennial stream just just in addition to it. But so I, Kyle, I, do get, I think uh, if I could just make a recommendation to the commission, I think at this point it sounds like maybe some more digging back into the files is needed. Um, just to really confirm, um, you know, what the scope of the enforcement is of the site. Um, so I yeah. think it is quite different cases, whether it's, um, whether that's considered a stream and, you know, although it's not mapped, if there are upgradient wetlands, mm -hmm. uh, even if it flows out of the wetland through drainage structures, through a culvert somewhere along the line, it would be jurisdictional. I can't speak for the previous agent. So Kyle, I think we might want to look back into the files, see if there's notes or any kind of email chains uh, related to that. And if it turns out um, that it's a moot point and it was just for the land subject to flooding, um, then you know maybe something uh, could be pursued on that end. Something like uh, confirming that there was no fill placed in the floodplain, um, something along those lines. Okay. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Mr. Rago, are you a, a wetland scientist? I am not. A, I am not a botanist. I am. I am a professional engineer, though, so I, I understand hydrology, but not. Not. I'm not a botanist. Would it possible be possible to get a wetland scientist out to the site? It, there have been. There's. There's no jurisdiction. There's no. Uh, there's no bordering vegetated wetlands along the the length of that, and the 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 historic vegetation was just uh, like a. Mr. Tukmanian said it was it was yeah. almost exclusively invasive species that had over um, you know overwhelmed a lot. Okay. But yeah, we I mean we could get a botanist out to look at that stream, but again, it's cul culverted with stone, so it's it's fairly simple um, mm. determination. It did, it did look vegetated along the sides to me, but I, it was hard to see yeah. in a very quick yeah. overview. Um, I thought in previous um, pictures of that um, stream. It had lined walls with with stone. It does. And at this yeah. point, it looks like the stone has fallen into the brook. Is that it? that I, what I'm looking I, at now? I couldn't say. I haven't been out there in you know probably over a year, but um, so so I I don't know. I think there's some some upper bank area. There's stone lining, and then above that is soil that that kind of rolls over the top of it, maybe, but. I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, we are getting fairly late and we still have a really hefty agenda. Um, let's see. So if there's any other questions, comments. Just one quick one. So I know that before you said that you had a tenant which you've evicted and that right now that that corner with the gravel is not going to be used. If you rent the building again, are you, I mean, is that something that's still going to be considered an option in the future that that's going to keep coming up? So the building is, is a separate address and a separate parcel. Uh, we occupy the building ourselves for cold storage. Uh, mm -hmm. We have no intention of renting the building out, which is 74 AIM Street. Okay. Uh, the lot as is, I we have no intention of renting out until we address what's going on with the conservation commission and building department. Mm -hmm. I think um, things are starting to get more simplified with the tenant vacating and everything. And we want to kind of address everything, clarify it and uh, not, you know, go further down the rabbit hole of complicating the situation with tenants. So we're going to hold off mm -hmm. on any new tenants coming in. We're going to hold off on any um, alterations to the ground or anything. We're just going to bring it to a complete stop until we know what the city wants and we know where we stand with it too. Because Perhaps uh, Mr. Holden could like go along with the building department on this as well, just as you had said for the for one of the previous. Yeah, that sounds that sounds reasonable. I think that uh, you know just to keep things moving along, I think obviously we need to do a little bit more uh, background work here. Um, so. Uh, this is great new information. Uh, thank you, uh, two gentlemen, for uh, for speaking with us here tonight. Um, I guess um, my recommendation at this point would be um, over the next month, uh, the three of us can be in communication, and uh, I'll be working with the the building department, and we can try to maybe uh, 
kind of get all on the same page as far as definitions, uh, and then we can move forward uh, from there uh, next month. Uh, at the perhaps moment. get a wetland scientist out there to really do a full evaluation and yeah, yeah, that would be great. Good. So should should we plan on that? Should should we engage a, a botanist to go out and check the the sidelines of that? Um, culvert or stream, uh, depending on what you call it, um, to, for, for vegetation, is that? Um, well, I think the, the whole point is that you want, to, you, want to, you want to develop your site in a way that's useful for you, correct? Yeah. And I yes. think you need to make sure you, have, you know what you have there first before you know Absolutely. exactly what direction to go in. Okay. Yeah. So if you could do that, I think that would be a great first step while Kyle is investigating further. Um, this was just, um, it was a little concerning for us because it almost seemed like enforcement order upon enforcement order upon enforcement order, and it just looked like there was no action at all. And right. yeah, so I'm I'm really pleased that you came here tonight and explained everything, and I think you certainly can move forward. Okay, we'll 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 get a botanist out there, and and they can look at those those banks. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, just to clarify, we're going to see them in July, and there'll be follow up from Kyle based on the findings with the environmental scientists and uh, the meetings with the owner. Is that correct? Yeah, and I'm going to do some more digging and seeing exactly what um, I was looking over here as we were going through this meeting. But yeah, what Megan had issued and, and kind of really delving into the notice of intent and everything presented because there was an engineering plan that was presented in, in the past as well. So we'll kind of all get on the same page in the next month. Will, will July be enough time, 30 days, be enough time for all that to be done? Yeah, I think at least for us to, have, to get this initial kind of communication thing set up and, and kind of get all on the same page as far as uh, what we're actually even dealing with, with here, I think, yeah. And so next month, we'll just get an update from you, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank that you. sounds reasonable. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for... Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. All your work. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good night. Um, enforcement order, let's see, uh, 803 Crescent Street. Uh, yes, so I just have another brief update here. Um, the uh, property owner is Bruno Silva. Um, he came before the commission, uh, may have been uh, in the April meeting. Um, he is currently, uh, he called me today, I spoke to him this afternoon. Um, he's not going to be here tonight during the meeting. Uh, I'm just going to give the update for him. Uh, he has contracted out um, with J.K. Holgram. Uh, to uh, do the, the remediation plan for uh, the site. Um, that's in process now. Um, and uh, Scott has given him an estimation of uh, there might be a month or you know, a couple months uh, to, 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 because everything's busy now for him to get that plan together. But uh, the applicant has been in, in communication with an engineering firm uh, to get this remediation plan put together. And that's kind of where we are here. Okay. And okay, that's fine. If perhaps in another couple of months, if we don't hear from him, we need to follow up to see what. Yeah, I, I, he he seems very uh, uh, you know willing to work with the commission on this matter. So I mean, if, if, if I you know, and it's a busy time of year now, so mm -hmm. I yeah, I'd say give him a couple months, and we'll just see where we end up. Okay, keep on the radar. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Now onto the certificates of compliance. Um, we have a couple of those. The first one, Heritage Court. Is uh, someone here from Heritage Court? Right. Yes, we do. Okay. So we'll hear from them first. If you could promote them. Mr. Barros and Mr. Yes, Potman. <laughs> yes. Gets a little tricky with the spelling. Hi. Um, yeah. Hi, sorry. Good evening, good evening everyone. Um, my name is Nelza Barrows. I am one of the owners um, of the Heritage Court property today. Um, we, tonight we're looking for a, um, we're asking the commission this evening. This is a, this is something that has come before 
the commission before. There are a couple of familiar faces that are probably, you know, <laughs> um, well aware of um, the heritage, heritage Court property and, you know, the steps that we've taken to, got, to get to this point. Um, so we were issued, just to fast forward a little bit, we were issued a new order of conditions um, and we worked closely with Megan Shave also to get to this point. Um, so we did, um, we completed all of our pre-construction requirements. Um, we have maintenance steps um, and actions in place. We've met with Kyle, um, you know, to get him up to speed and he's done his site visit. He can chime in afterwards also. But tonight we're here for the partial certificate of compliance, specifically for lot 25 of Heritage Court. We currently have a buyer um, that has been patiently waiting for a couple of months um, for her home. So um, Kyle, I don't know if you can chime in as far as the requirements and that part. Sure, yeah. Um, so I uh, did review uh, the site plan, the order of conditions, and I did a site visit. Um, and everything seems to be, mostly everything is, is in order for the issuance of a partial uh, a certificate of compliance. The one hang up is that uh, in the order of conditions, um, it states that permanent uh, boundary markers should be installed uh, at, the, at the wetland boundary on the site. And uh, that has unfortunately not been done. And so like um, I, I was out on the site, I think it was um, Friday last week. And that's when yes, we determined that, that the that was the only thing that was kind of holding us up. So uh, we tried to work with the applicant, um, uh, but unfortunately they weren't able to get the materials and, you know, obtained and then installed uh, by the time the meeting came around this week on Wednesday. Um, so that's the only part of the order of conditions that, that isn't, met. Um, and that's the only thing that's kind of in my mind holding us up from issuing the partial certificate of compliance. Did you um, see documentation of um, of the stormwater management? Um, yeah, so we, we, we were issued um, a, let's see here, as part of the packet, uh, we, we, we got uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the, the bill that, that had, I've not actually seen the, the review itself, but uh, proof okay. that they had the review done. Yes. So it was actually sent to you, Kyle, um, Kyle via email. Okay. Um, and so there is a maintenance. We we work together with Megan Shave to have a maintenance, um, you know, program set in place. So we already have a placeholder for next year's maintenance of the property. And as far as the markers are concerned, we were under the impression because there are only, I believe, four lots that require a partial release. So we were under the impression we have, at the moment we have temporary markers in place um, that, are, that are visible and Kyle can attest to that. There, there are temporary markers in place that are visible. We did, um, we reached out to, you know, Kyle, we worked hand in hand with Kyle to ensure that we purchased, we didn't want to, purchase something that isn't of compliance, right? So we touched base with Kyle and he suggested um, a concrete, is it called a concrete um, monument? So what we did is we ordered the, we ordered four concrete monuments. I have proofs of purchase for those. The only thing is, is there weren't any locally. We tried, it was too short notice. Um, we were trying to make it before the meeting. So we have signs that are in route as well as the concrete monuments. The monuments are set to be, they said that it should take four, four to five days um, for delivery. Mm -hmm. so. so once those, once they're delivered, do you know how long it takes for them to be put in place? I have, I have the guys ready to go. They're like, <laughs> they're, they're ready to go. Um, it's just unfortunate. These homeowners have been patiently waiting. I would yeah. hate for this small, not that it's a small task, it's just, you know, I, I, I'm asking the commission this evening if there is, you know, a workaround, if there's something that there are temporary markers, as we, as I said, in place, and that has been confirmed. If there's a, a workaround where they can, you know, move into their home and, you know, in five days or on the sixth day, you know, produce confirmation that that was done. I mean, if 
one thing that we've seen before, and I don't know if it just colors um, some, at least my my perspective on mm -hmm. permanent markers. I think that the requirement for permanent markers is essential because I can't tell you how many times right. pieces of property have changed hands and right. things have been changed and people say, I didn't know. I didn't know that was a wetland. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, that, and that ends up just developing so many more problems. Mm -hmm. And so I, perhaps that's why it does say minimum requirements for issuance of a partial certificate of co compliance shall include installation of permanent uh, limit of work marks. And that is for the partial certificate. It says it very clearly in um, what Megan had put together um, in her COC. So, I mean, oh, see, I'm sorry. So um, I certainly don't want to hold it up, but if it's only a few days away for them to come and you have people all ready to go, um, would it be possible maybe that we might um, ask as soon as you have them in, Kyle could go out and then sign off right away and instead of you coming back in another month? That's that's actually, that that actually would be a great compromise if we could do that as opposed to us coming having to you know wait another month and have yeah. you know if we can if yeah. we can come to that compromise that would be actually amazing um because it, it would serve both all parties involved so i i'm in constant contact with kyle um i've actually sent him the information of the proof of purchase of the monuments the guys are lined up so i can just we can move accordingly i don't know what their protocol is, Kyle, you obviously would relay the information. Um. So if that's something that the, the commission decides to do, I, I can certainly uh, confirm the installation of these permanent markers mm -hmm. and then issue this as a certificate of compliance. So, um, but I just wanna make sure that the commission's okay with, with that kind of conditional approval tonight before we move forward. I'm sorry, commissioners. I didn't. Um, please open it up for discussion. I'm not trying to hog the hog yeah. floor here. I don't have a problem with that. It sounds like they're moving forward. They've got you know documentation that they can show, and if you know Kyle can go out there afterwards, I don't have a problem um, problem with that. I agree. Yeah, the only thing I ask is that you make um, in the file, Kyle, if you could just show us the proof of purchase um, so we can also see them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can yeah, show put that. it into the file. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, great yeah. idea, Laura. Yeah, great, great idea, Laura. Okay, so um, do you know, we need a motion, I believe, Jonathan. We would need a motion to issue a partial certificate, correct? That's correct. And All right, I make a motion for uh, to issue a partial certificate of compliance to Heritage Court for Lot 25 um, with the stipulation that um, Kyle sign off on that next week after the permanent markers have been put in. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Speak our eyes. Clay, I. Curtis, I. Boris, I. It's been passed. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kyle, for your help. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Heritage Court, I do remember that one. Okay. Um, I need a short I, break. Is that I was okay? just going to ask that. Would you mind if we take, we could just shut off our little cameras for like five minutes, six minutes? Okay. We'll be back at 8.07, okay? Okay, thank you. Let's see, do we have a quorum? We do. We have quorum, good. So we can continue. Where were we? West Chestnut Street, I think. Another certificate of compliance? Yes, that is correct. Yep. And that one is 337393 West Chestnut Street. Yeah, it's two different parcels. So that's why it's kind of coded like that. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, Jim, are you around? Uh, I can promote you to talk to this. Yep. Okay. Jim Burr? Yes. Oh, it looks like two people had their hands up. User Bob Palaji. Okay. 
I think maybe Bob Pelagi might uh, be around also. Yeah, I see him. I think I think he was promoted, right? Yes. But Bob is muted currently. Unmute yourself, Bob. User Bob, that sounds like it's funny. Yeah. So, Mr. Burke, you you've hung around for a while. Yes, I've been, I've enjoyed uh, listening to the discussion. Uh, so, uh, I, I think Bob Pelagi is the one that really should run with this. This is a a, a closing that was set to occur. That uh, I represented the seller, have known the family for uh, decades. And uh, they were selling uh, the uh, family homestead. And in the process, uh, it was discovered there was an outstanding order of conditions of something like a 20 year vintage that uh, uh, work was done and performed uh, and reviewed, but uh, we never followed through with a certificate of com uh, completion that's required. And mm -hmm. it required Bob to get involved and take a look. So Bob, you wanna run with this? I will, thank you. Uh uh, good evening, Commission members. Uh, whoop, did we, uh, Bob, could you give your background? We lost Bob. Yeah, it looks like we lost him. Uh, Bob did provide a statement. Um, I can read that um, in the meantime while he is trying to get back on. So let me pull that up. Okay, this is a statement from uh, Mr. Pelagi, um, and it says, uh, Dear Mr. Holden, please be advised that, there in, that in reference to the above-named site, I have reviewed the order of conditions issued on June 19, 2002, as recorded at Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, and the reference plan prepared by Land Surveyors Incorporated, dated May 31, 2002, revised at June 17, 2002. Upon making a field inspection of the work performed by the applicant, I found the disturbed area as shown on the plan to be restored and heavily vegetated. I've also found that five, the five foot wide earth berm to be in place and heavily vegetated. It is my professional opinion that the work was performed in substantial, in, in substantial compliance with the order of conditions and accompanying plan. In addition, an area forward of the earth berm has been fine uh, graded, loamed and hydro seeded. Silt fence was installed on both both ends of the seated area. On behalf of the applicant, I requestly request the commission issue a certificate of compliance. Um, and then I will let uh, Mr. Pelagi speak when he gets back on, but um, just to kind of keep things moving. Um, I, I did do a site visit. Um, I re reviewed the order of conditions. And um, unfortunately, uh, because this is such an old filing, um, we don't have all of the documentation. So we couldn't find the notice of intent, the original notice of intent that was issued uh, or that was that was applied, you know, that was part of the process. Uh, we did find the original order of conditions um, and we were able to find the original site plan. Uh, but the, the, the site plan references a restoration plan that was part of the notice of intent. Uh, but we were not able to, to find the notice of intent or the, re the full restoration plan. So uh, this is kind of one of these things that it, it's a very old, uh, uh, you know, order of conditions and, uh, um, you know, and they just kind of needed to be closed out. So um, one thing that I had as a, as a concern, uh, very similar to the last uh, applicant that came through, um, and uh, this this site, uh, the order of condition does uh, does require the placement of permanent uh, boundary markers, uh, uh, permanent boundary markers uh, across the wetland. Um, Bob, I know, has some some comments on that. Uh, so when he gets back, uh, but in the meantime, I was not able to find those. And uh, you know, Bob Bob is back in. Let me promote him. Thank you, Bob. I didn't see you there. Okay, promoting Bob the panelist, uh, and he should be able to speak to this a little bit more um, as far as this goes. So, um, Bob, it's all yours. Although you're muted, nope. Okay. Hey. Am I on now? Yes, you are. Good evening, and thank you for your patience. I'm sorry about that. Somehow I got disconnected, but and thank you, uh, Cal, for reading those opening comments. So yeah, basically you've heard the history of the of the site. This dates back to 2002, and um, as Kyle had stated, unfortunately we don't have a copy of the 
the actual notice of intent um, as filed. We had a couple of hearings with the Conservation Commission and uh, we utilized the services of Dr. Hewitson to, uh, to accomplish that. And uh, unfortunately his detailed, his detailed work was part, made part of the, the uh, notice of intent. And that's unfortunately, th that's not available to us. Uh, the thing that's interesting about this project is that if he had uh, noticed or if he had flagged some areas of concern of bordering vegetated wetland associated with a brook, uh, that was not labeled on the plan. So that uh, that makes this a little more elusive as to where the boundary that uh, no work boundary should be. Uh, I know it says I'm looking. I was I was familiarizing myself with the special order of conditions, and uh, there's the plan. And number 27 does state that there needs to be markers, uh, permanent markers there. But that that item number 27 doesn't speak to the material that the markers are made from. It doesn't speak to the interval that the markers are. Are supposed to be set at so and then add to the to the confusion that then there may well not have been uh bordering vegetated wetland along that bank i don't know if it because it was re removed i don't know it's too too long ago the only thing i can say with certainty is that we're outside of the jurisdiction of the riverfront area so um that in a nutshell is pretty much is pretty much the story mr butler is in the process of selling the property as attorney Burke has, has mentioned um, and any activity that he has conducted out there obviously is gonna cease. Uh, he's cleaned the area, area up the best he can. I think, I don't know, Kyle, if you were out there uh, subsequent to our last site visit, were you out there? Uh, yes, so I went back out uh, to the site yesterday actually. And can you explain what you saw, please? Uh, yeah, you know, I might even have some photos for you, but basically, yeah, the, the berm is is intact. It's heavily vegetated, um, and on the uh, the the opposite side of the berm, so there's like the the riverfront, the berm, and then on the the opposite side of the berm from the river, uh, they've gone and seeded uh, an area there. Uh, and like uh, Bob said in his cover letter, uh, they had a silt fence up uh, uh, to kind of protect the the resource area behind uh, where they seeded. Uh, and so on the map here that I'm kind of sharing on screen, um, it's kind of like this. So this is this kind of rectangular thing uh -huh. here is the berm. Uh, the, the brook is kind of right through here on this dotted line. And then they've kind of seeded this area up here. Um, but as Bob spoke to earlier, you know, uh, the, the order of conditions uh, lacks a lot of detail as far as what's expected uh, for the placement of these markers. Um, so but that's the only the, the markers is really the only thing in my opinion that's kind of holding this uh certificate of compliance up as well everything else seems to be uh, in order with the uh the issued order of conditions mm -hmm. um and again i think the requirement for permanent markers is is a good one just for future commissions i think um, it's i think it's a reasonable request madam chair chairperson mm -hmm. i think uh typically what we've seen used Historically, I'm not, I don't know about Brockton, but in other towns, they use sections of PVC pipe. It's, it's, it's easily available. It's very durable. It's very durable. It's, uh, it's easy to be seen. Uh, you can, you can screw signs to it if that's, if that's the objective so that uh, PVC piping is, is something that I would respectfully recommend. Um, it's, I know each town seems to have its own, some towns use, uh, you know, pressure treated lumber. And I mean, there are different physical objects that are used. Sometimes some towns use cast iron piping, but uh, I think the most common that I remember seeing was PVC pipe set. It stands out rather well. I think it's just as long as, as whoever the buyers are realize that this is the limit um, this is the limit of the of the area that they have to really be concerned of. And if they're going to be doing something, they need to get in touch with us. But just, sure, sure. Makes perfect sense. Yep. Yeah. Um, would would a wetlands delineation be necessary in order to know where to place them? Well, lacking That's lacking so a, lacking a delineation uh, back in back then, and because there's no more work proposed. I, I, I would my comment my my response to that madam chair would be that there's no at this point there's no benefit to do a, to doing a delineation at this point 
Kyle and I talked this over and we thought that if we were to take and, and put the, the desired number of, of uh, barriers along the foot of the, of the, uh, of the earth berm, that that would, that would probably serve the purpose. The forward, in other words, the forwardmost edge of the, the, uh, the, earth, the earth berm there. How far is that from the brook, can you tell? From yes, it's about uh, that. So the forward edge would be, oh, probably thirty-five to forty feet. Mm -hmm. Is it's that an open the, brook? Is that what? Is that an open trickling brook? Is it is, and and I I'm going to say that it's probably perennial. I I doubt that that's intermittent. I I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm going to guess that it's perennial. I mean, it may be dry for very short periods of the year, but I don't. I don't think it qualifies as a as an intermittent. Mm -hmm. So we're assuming that uh, that it would that it have all the protections of the River, Rivers Act. Mm -hmm. Kyle, with his estimate of where he's saying to put the markers, are you? Do you really feel that that's a? It's not necessary since it is as old as it is. Because you indicated closing it out was something that. Yeah, no, I I think that you know putting the putting the markers on the you know the the far side away from the brook of the berm I think is appropriate. The rest of this area is uh, you know the the berm was uh, put in place to protect the the, the resource area behind it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's what the whole plan was for originally. All right. Um, and you know putting putting like the you know conservation area do not. Do not disturb the area behind this. I think kind of right, right. Uh, gets gets the goal ac across here, right? We were mm -hmm. trying to protect that that riverfront, uh, that 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 brook area. The berm's been installed; it's in place, and we want to protect that that berm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and then and the new homeowners are aware. The people who are purchasing the property, they are aware of the conservation land that's on their property. I think um, Mr. Butler can easily make the new buyer. Uh, make the new buyer aware of their responsibility and aware okay. of the sensitivity of the area, certainly. And, and okay. I think, I think Ruby, to that point, um, Bob, I think that's actually a condition in the, in the order of conditions right. is that, that, that this order of conditions is passed on uh, through ownership of the property. So the so subsequent owners are informed. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if only that really happened in real life, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. What about the that's area? My concern. Me? Joyce, Joyce, that's one of my concerns is making sure um, that it's clear that the responsibility is, you know, passed on to the to the new owner. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, if I may, Jim Burke, uh, the, the buyer is actually the tenant there now. Oh, good. Uh, so so he, he absolutely is aware uh, oh, good. of this good. entire process. Good. As long as it continues in, per in perpetuity, right? Exactly. Whoever he sends it on to. Yeah. Okay. And and I think a permanent marker is the way to do that, really, because anyone that has a bunch of PVC pipes poking up in their yard will say, what's that? <laughs> yeah. So can we agree that can we agree that, that would be the method of marking would be uh PVC piping along the along the forward edge of the of the earth berm? With some marking on it. Would you like uh, no a limit of work signs? A couple of those limit of work signs you could Put a couple of those on 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 the on the pipe just to on the on the vertical pipe just to ensure that there's no there's no mis misgivings about the purpose of the pipe. Ms. Nero, uh, you've had lots of experience in this environmental stuff. What do you what do you think of that as a resolution as a as a limit of work notice notification for um, people that are coming in to purchase and or eventually purchase property as a permanent marker? Yeah, I think, I mean, in my experience, you know, I, I personally haven't seen PVC used. I've actually always seen, uh, you know, with the exception of granular concrete bounds, which I think are a bit excessive in this case, I generally see a, a pipe or rebar similar to what a surveyor would set um, with some kind of, you know, signage affixed to the top of it. But if the commission's comfortable with PVC and there can be a signage with appropriate language affixed onto it, um, you know, as long as it accomplishes the intent of the order and the intent of the condition, I think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. 
And again, just as just as the previous um, the previous hearing that we had, um, gentlemen, how do you feel about if once it's established that you have it installed, then perhaps Kyle could go out and verify that and sign off on the on the um, um, on the certificate of compliance. Would that be okay? Does it also say that the permanent signs have to designate a no salt zone also? Um, yeah, that's something that, that, that Bob and I have spoken about. So that can just be signage that we add to those PVC pipes, you know. Okay. Well, with regard to the notice of no salt, there isn't, there isn't the opportunity or the possibility, I don't think. If you, well, Kyle's been out there, so he has the benefit of the site visit. I don't, think there's the, I don't think there's the possibility of, of the use of salt. It's, salt yeah. never, is not going to be stored there. It's not going to be used there. I can't think of a salt application. Uh, that would take place there. So, corn on the cob at a summertime picnic. It what? Corn on the cob, summertime picnic. <laughs> but I no, do I agree. agree with the, I do agree with a limit of work sign. And then yeah. the only other thing I would ask you is, what 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 interval is the is the commission comfortable with relative to the placement of of the pipes? I I would recommend every fifty feet, but because it's again it's wide open. Uh, it isn't as if the it's all covered with with vegetation and they're hard to see it's in the it's wide open so i'm going to i'm going to recommend or, or respectfully request a an interval of 50 feet on the on the pvc pipe what's the berm length the, i'm sorry how long is the berm the berm the berm varies i was looking for length on my plan here yeah. and i don't see i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to approximate based on the length of the disturbed air i'm going to say that the that the that the earth berm is probably maybe possibly if it was built according to the plan maybe maybe two hundred feet two hundred and twenty five feet I'm I'm estimating so that if you put just, one in, one in each end and one not to exceed fifty feet in interval uh, I think that would that would jump out at anybody that was in the area that uh, with a couple of signs uh, on, on the on a couple of the vertical pipes, I think that would jump out to anybody that was in there, uh, that what their obligation is or what their caution is. Commissioners? I'm comfortable with that. I don't see it as a high traffic area or anything. So yeah. I know I that in the past, oh, sorry, Ruby, um, that 25 feet was recommended, but because the area is so open, I believe 50 feet would probably be okay. Ruby? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Sounds fine. And and Kyle, once you have that um, that certificate done, then you will uh, present it to us as a, or you'll just upload it. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I, uh, if we kind of handle this the same way that we're going to handle the, that we're going to handle the Heritage Court uh, Certificate of Compliance. So uh, after they install these um, permanent markers, I will go out and verify, issue the Certificate of Compliance, uh, and then I will upload that uh, for your review. But then also, I guess if we need to, we can also address that at the next meeting. You know, the, the fact that it's been yeah, issued. Better, better but done, but sure. yes, I guess if you guys vote on a conditional approval tonight, um, yeah. I would just be able to issue it and then uh, I'll, I'll post it and, and inform you guys when that happens. Okay. So does someone need to make a motion? Yep. Okay. Really? I'll make a motion um, to issue a certificate of compliance for 337, 393 West Chestnut Street with the condition that Kyle will go out and verify um, and sign off on the issue. Of compliance. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. All okay. right. Thank you and have a good nice evening. That you have, it's nice that you have a resident that will be purchasing. That's wonderful. Yes. That's easy. <laughs> thank you. That's good. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Um, so the notice next one would be a notice of intent on Oak Street, which was continued. That's so that, correct. Uh, right. yes, continuance to the Ju July meeting for continued. this, as uh, well project. as I should have noted, I should have uh, mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting um, that the 940 Belmont Street VA uh, 
fueling station has also been continued to July, correct? Yes, that's correct. And then also, Madam Chair, uh, the Fuller Craft Museum has requested a continuation uh, until the July meeting. Okay. So you know, okay, that's fine. I have a report on the on the agenda. Fine. I'm still going to issue that, but like the, the, they are not uh, there, uh, no providing one anything yep. to this. Meeting. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So that means we'll be at number seven now for notice of intent for an Ames Street substation. Correct, Conoco yes, Engineers. Yep. And this is one that uh, uh, Jonathan, I, um, I'm going to let you speak to. This is one that the beta has done uh, a peer review on. And I think uh, we've got a representative uh, for uh, eight, the 82, not 82, um, uh, 97 Ames Street substation here. Yep. Michael is here. I'm going to promote you. Hi, good evening. It's Mike Tuhill from Conoco Engineers and Scientists um, here on behalf of Mass Electric for this work at 97 Ames Street. It's a substation. As we talked about at the last hearing, this is a, um, a cleanup under the MCP of lead contaminated soil on the site. Um, some of the cleanup area is within, most of the cleanup area is within bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, but the, the project is to dig up and remove, remediate the lead contaminated soil and then put everything back to the same elevation. So there's no change at all in BLSF out there. We're outside of the 25 foot riverfront area as well. And I know I did review um, uh, Beta's peer review, Jonathan, um, Madam Chair, if you want Jonathan to speak to that, that would be great. Certainly would, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we did perform a peer review of this. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward project. So just for the commission's, um, you know, I guess a summary for the commission without going through every comment is, um, you know, we concur with, first of all, how the applicant depicted the existing conditions, um, you know, per uh, the riverfront area regulations, a majority of trout brook on the site does not have riverfront area since it flows through a culvert exceeding 200 feet in length. Uh, however, the applicant did depict the 25 foot riverfront area where it daylights on the site. So, you know, a majority of the work or really all the work is uh, that's jurisdictional of the commission is just a bit within buffer zone associated with the cleanup. Um, so as a cleanup project, these are afforded um, limited project provisions under the Wildlife Protection Act. It allows activities uh, to occur without strict compliance with performance standards. However, in this case, uh, cleanup under the mass contingency plan is required to meet any um, ordering land subject to flooding uh, interests. However, in this case, it's, it's sort of moot for this project because the applicant, as they noted, is proposing to pull out contaminated material uh, backfill with clean material and restore back to existing grade. So they are meeting the bordering land subject to flooding performance standards regardless, and there's no compensatory flood storage needed. Um, we uh, also provided a, a handful of uh, special conditions in our letter. Uh, everything, you know, starting with no herbicides or pesticides to be used, all fill needs to be clean and free of debris. Um, and if any dewatering is needed, that um, that such plan be submitted to the commission for review and approval for, uh, prior to dewatering. Um, and also submitting uh, the seed mix to be used as well as submitting it as built at the end of the project. Um, that's really it. And, you know, we feel that uh, the applicant has provided the commission with the information they need to deliberate on issuance of an order. Okay. Kyle, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Tuhill, I know that you left the meeting last week and I had not asked for hearing of visitors. And I'm sorry, but there was, um, there was someone, his name was John McMahon. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I'm not. No. We do have a letter in the file. Perhaps we could forward that on to Mr. Tuhill so he would be aware of what Mr. McMahon's concerns were. Sure, I can absolutely do that. Okay, that would be great. Um, is is there anyone here from from an abutter or 
an attendee that feels as though they'd like to speak to this project. That's it. Aim Street, 97 Aim Street. I don't see anyone with their hand raised, Madam Chair. I don't either. Commissioners, any questions or concerns about this notif notice of intent? No, I do not have any. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. I make a motion to close the hearing for Ames Street. I second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded to close the motion uh, to close the hearing for the Aim Street substation. Roll call vote, please. Beak where I play I. Curtis I. Boris I. Motion passes. Um, motion to what is our motion for? Um, pardon me. Certificate. I'm sorry. What is there a certificate? Yeah, certificate of, uh, of compliance. Order of condition. Yeah, this order is an order of conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I haven't done an order of conditions for. Yeah, <laughs> notice to issue an order of conditions with the special conditions that were stated mm -hmm. as outlined by the beta group. Motions, please. I make a motion to issue an order of conditions as outlined by the beta group for um, Aim Street substation. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Roll call, roll call vote, please. Be clear, aye. Play, aye. Curtis, aye. Morris, aye. Mr. Tuhill. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll make sure we get that letter to you so that yes. you're aware of what the abutters. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, on to. Oh, we have an continuance, right? Yeah, for the VA. We already said that. So is Mr. Scott Ferry here? Yeah. He is. I am promoting Scott to a panelist. Thank you. Scott, you must have poll because Mr. Holden arranged this agenda. So all three of your all three of your hearings would be in sequential order. I appreciate that. I would have appreciated it more if you put me first instead of <laughs> That's Noted. Number. Thank you. <laughs> but regardless, I do appreciate that, Madam Chair. Okay. So the first is a notice of intent for property at Pleasant Street. It's a yes. family construction. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Scott Farrier, Holmgren Engineering. I was uh, before you folks uh, at your last month's meeting to discuss this, uh, this filing we have for a, a two-family home on Pleasant Street. Uh, just before Field Street. And at the time, we did not have, uh, we actually didn't give Beta enough time to, to conduct their review. We were a little bit late uh, in, uh, in paying the consultant fee. We thought we weren't going to need it, actually. So we paid the fee. Uh, we received our review from Beta, uh, I believe, uh, last Friday and uh, maybe Thursday. And we've since uh, made changes to the plan that I have uh, in front of you. My screen is awfully dark. Uh, yeah. But I do, uh, hopefully I can share the screen. I don't see you at all. Well, that that might be all right, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, so uh, Scott, this is uh, the plan that you have up here is for the uh, uh, 549 Copeland. Copeland Street. Oh, that's Copeland. Yep, yeah, I'm just trying okay, to. Just, <laughs> Just wanted to make you aware. Okay. There we go. All right. Hopefully everybody can see that. Do you see that plan, Kyle? Uh, yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so, uh, as I said, Madam Chair, we have Beta's review. Uh, they had a few comments. None of them, uh, really, none of them that that we had any issues with. None of them that were all that. Uh, significant some notes to add to the plan uh, regarding a, a, some construction issues, uh, a dumpster or a construction dumpster to be added to the plan, uh, a material stockpile area to be added to the plan, 
uh, some additional grading uh, around the parking area. And then uh, they also suggested that we show a level spreader area uh, at the end of the parking instead of a leaching catch basin that we had previously. Uh, so those are really the significant changes. Uh, as I said, we made the, the, the changes, submitted them to the to the commission on Tuesday. So I'm, I'm sure they haven't uh, had a chance to look at them uh, at this point, but we were, uh, as I said, in, in, in agreement with all of the, the comments and, and hoping that we could uh, close it out subject to their, uh, their blessing of these revised plans, Madam Chair. So, so, but Beta hasn't sent us a review of your comments, correct? That's correct. I, I I don't believe they like I said they they would have just received them yesterday. So I'm, right. I'm guessing they haven't got to it yet, Madam Chair. That's correct. We have not drafted uh formal responses yet or materials. Okay. Um, either Mr. Holden or um Mr. Nero, if you have anything that you'd like to add to this before. Uh, just that we haven't had a chance to review yet, so I don't want to yeah. speak uh, prior to that, but we can certainly, um, you know, as soon as we complete a review and, and these uh, matter, these comments are addressed, as, as Scott is noting, um, we can issue a letter uh, stating such. Okay. And that will give us some time. Hopefully it'll be, yeah, so it'll give us some time to be able to review both what Scott had to say and and your um, response as well. Yeah. That would be fair, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you. I did, uh, I was wondering, Mr. Faria, there was one thing, the um, post-construction best management practices packet. That yes. Submitted, it said that there's an inspection schedule and a checklist. I didn't see that in here. At least that's what it said in the table of contents. I didn't know if you're gonna be presenting that or not when you give your full packet. Uh, I believe it must, yeah, I'm looking at it now. As you say that, Madam Chair, we did not include it, but I'll make sure I uh, I send it over to, uh, to Kyle in, in the commission tomorrow morning, Madam Chair. That's great, and then we'll have that. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So I assume we will, uh, oh, I'm sorry, commissioners, any questions at all? I don't have any at this time. Okay. I don't have me either at this time. Okay. Is Peggy still with us? I don't see her on my screen. Yeah, I am. I have a quick question about the leaching field. Where is that going to be? So the, the leaching field is a uh, an infiltration system right here on the, as you're looking at it from Pleasant Street on the right side of the house to handle the runoff uh, from the roof. Okay. So there'll be uh, gutters, downspouts with leaders uh, leading from those downspouts to the infiltration system for the roof runoff. And that says eight by twenty. Yes. How deep is it? Um, it's about oh, it's about three feet deep with the the structure and the stone underneath it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions at all or comments? I would expect the only thing that we can do is continue to July meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I entertain a motion to continue the zero Pleasant Street um, uh, notice of intent. Yeah. To entertain that motion, please. I make a motion to continue zero Pleasant Street to the July meeting. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Or aside. Okay, we will see that again next month. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commission members. You're welcome. The next one on the agenda is number 10 Copeland Street. Um, so do you know, was the abutter notification completed on that? Do you, and do you have a DEP file number? Um, I do not have a, at least last I looked, Madam Chair, and I, to be honest, I didn't look today knowing that uh, you know, knowing that we weren't close to having beta or even go out there yet. So I, I, I didn't look today to, to see if we had received it yet. Uh, oh, okay. The, the abutter notification has been made. Uh, well, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure that I submitted that to, 
to Kyle, but I, I can certainly submit that to him. Okay. Well. Do you have the green cards or? or? Uh, it's the it's the certified mailing. Uh, yeah. The list. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. If you could submit that, that would be great. Sure. Thank so, you. on on this one, Madam Chair, we received our uh, quote from Beta uh, to review the wetlands line. Uh, my client uh, is uh, in agreement with it, just hasn't brought the check down to, to City Hall yet. So we haven't even given Beta the, the green light to get out there and, and review the line yet. So uh, I, th I think at this point, unfortunately, we don't have a ch uh, any choice but to ask for a continuance as well, Madam okay. Chair. And hopefully we'll, be, uh, hopefully we'll be ready for you in July. Okay, that sounds fine. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any questions at all? Kyle? I don't have any comments. Thank you. No. I don't have any either. Okay, I entertain a motion then to, to continue till July. I make a motion to continue 549 Copeland Street to the July meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to continue 549 Copeland to the uh, July meeting. Roll call vote, please. Equal aye. Clay aye. Curtis aye. Morris aye. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And let's see, the next one after that. Oh, a silo construction. Pretty exciting. In Brockton, in Brockton yeah. a silo. How cool is that? <laughs> so uh, again, Scott Ferry, a home green engineering. This, this project is, uh, it, it really is. It, not just the fact that it's a, a, a silo, but it's, it's a pretty cool project. It's at 1020 West Chestnut Street. Uh, Right at the right at the 24 overpass. If you're riding down Route 24, uh, heading north, uh, just before the 123 exit, you can see the existing silos that are out there. And uh, there's a building that's kind of tucked in the woods, as I said, right up against the right up against the highway that's uh, currently owned and uh, and operated by New England Tortilla Company, and uh, they make nacho chips uh, at that factory. It, it's like I said, not that many people in Brockton know that they're even there. But it's a uh, it's a, a pretty a pretty cool story, really. They've been open now for a few years. Business is booming. They they moved into Brockton. Uh, since they've moved in, they they spent an awful lot of money on the facility, uh, both on the outside and the inside. And uh, as part of their uh, continued expansion, they are making blue tortilla chips. And the corn or the maize to make those chips needs to be completely separate from uh, the other product. Uh, which necessitates this extra silo on the property. Uh, just as a quick history, we filed a notice of intent uh, back with the commission probably about five years ago, Madam Chair, received uh, an order of conditions. Uh, I'm just looking while I'm talking. Yeah, we received an order of conditions in 2019 and then filed for a certificate of compliance a year or so after that. So we, we did have an order of conditions to, to do the building construction uh, followed the order of conditions, received a certificate of compliance. Uh, as part of this project, the silo that they're looking to build is going to be placed on top of an existing concrete pad. Uh, and it's surrounded by the parking area. So there's, there's really no land disturbance at all. It's pretty much just plunking down this silo uh, on the property. It, uh, we, uh, it will not need site plan approval because of the, the square footage of the facility. It did need ZBA approval. Uh, just because of the height of the silo. So we did receive ZBA approval a few months ago, and uh, we're just hoping that you could issue a negative determination with whatever conditions you would see fit, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Scott. You. Kyle? Yeah, uh, Scott, I, I did the review uh, for this one. So um, I've just got a couple questions. Uh, when I was out on the site, um, one of the, I'm not sure if it was a, a floor manager or, or who it was, but someone came out and kind of talked to me about the, 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 the area in the back of the, uh, the factory there with the silos. And he mentioned that uh, he thought they were going, that you were planning on, on tearing up the concrete and like putting down a, a better foundation to support the weight of the silo. Is that something that that's, that's part of the plan? Uh, the, the structural part of it, I, I, I think that's, uh, perhaps a little bit in flux. They, they may have to, but it would still be within that existing concrete pad area. It wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't expand past that concrete pad. There's a chance that they have to uh, basically chisel out that, that little area that they would put the silo on just to, to pour some extra concrete to reinforce it, but it would still be within 
that existing concrete pad area, that work area. Okay. Um, Scott, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've got the uh, the plan pulled up here. So whoever yes. can kind of see what we're uh, talking that. about Thank here. You. Thank you. Okay, and then another concern that I had, Scott, was, um, okay, well, first off, let's kind of talk through the plan here. So this uh, grayed out silo here is the new silo that's going to be added. Uh, that's these correct. These two smaller uh, circles are the silos that are already existing. And as Scott had already said, uh, basically this entire uh, paved roadway back here, this is all concrete up through here, and then this is the actual factory uh, itself here. So um, the resource area in question is kind of uh, back over here. And it kind of, uh, you can see the, the wetland delineation markers over here. Um, and then I guess there, there is a, this, this is kind of just a, a drive back here. And there's kind of a curb uh, that, that separates the, the pavement from the resource area. Correct. Um, so anyway, uh, Scott, one thing that I, I was concerned about, you know, you have your limit of work here, uh, proposed area of work, uh, the circle here. Um, will that give you enough uh, room to access the site um, with all the machinery required um, as listed here on, on the site plan? Uh, well, the, yeah, I, I, I suppose the realistically the circle will probably be expanded once they start working, Kyle. Uh, you know, it, it'll it'll remain within the, the paved areas of the site. Certainly nothing will go beyond the paving, but yeah, realistically, I, I'm, I'm sure they'll have a a staging area that'll uh, that'll have to expand a little bit beyond my circle. Gentlemen, okay. is there a is there a key to show the size uh, for a scale? Is there a what? A scale bar to see the size of the the distances. Um, it it is a thirty scale drawing. The the silo as you know is a fourteen foot diameter, uh, and about forty feet feet high with the, the entire structure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and from the edge of the silo to the concrete pad, the existing, con the edge of the concrete pad uh, where it butts up against the bituminous paving, it's about 12 feet from the edge of the silo to the paving. Okay. So they've got that 12 foot area within the concrete pad to, to actually do work before they even break into the bituminous paving. Mm -hmm. So I see what you mean, Kyle. There's not a lot of room for wiggling, big. I mean, I, th there is plenty of room on, on site, but just not necessarily within the, yeah. the area. You're, you're right. Yeah. There. Yeah. My, mm -hmm. my circle is probably a little misleading. Okay. Um, does the commission have any questions before I move on to my recommendation? Not for me. No? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, like I said, I've reviewed the, uh, the RDA application. I've done a site inspection. Um, so I'm recommending that we issue a negative three determination subject to the following uh, conditions. Uh, the site plan shall include the addition of erosion control measures to prevent the bordering vegetated wetland to, sorry, to protect the bordering vegetated wetland during construction. And uh, all construction material slash storage for the project shall be placed outside of the 100 foot uh, wetland buffer zone. Um, and then I'm also recommending that we issue a positive 2B determination stating that the boundaries of the following resource area are not confirmed by this determination, uh, the bordering vegetated wetlands. So basically that's just saying that uh, the, 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 the bordering vegetated wetland uh, delineation on this map, like we're not like we're not confirming that with this uh, determination. So you can't go back later and say, oh, but you, you said this was it. You basically, right. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So the most important thing then is the negative three, or I guess we would we would have to vote on both, correct? Yes, I believe you have to vote on both. Commissioners, how are you doing? I'm ready to um, issue a negative three plus the conditions outlined by Kyle for 1020 West Chestnut Street. Second. And also a positive to be uh, determination. Positive to be as well. No, it's all at the one time. I thought it was separate. So it's all at once. I think we could do it all at once. Okay. 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 Yeah, we can do it all well, once. then I'll revise my motion to include uh, negative three plus conditions plus positive to be um with the stipulation that this map does not delineate the bordering. Uh, vegetated wetlands for 1020 West Chestnut Street. Second. Second. 
so the motion, uh, the motion for uh, the negative two, uh, negative three determination and a positive two B determination has been made and seconded. So roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Play aye. Curtis aye. Morris aye. Motion passes. Let's have some nachos. There you go. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Oakland Street is done. Silo construction is done. So now I believe the next three that seem to be linked together would be playground, park, slash, farm, slash, um, city, city property work. Is that correct? The RDAs? Yeah, that is correct, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, and we have three, uh, I, I think at least three people from the Parks Department here to speak. So I've promoted them all. Um, okay. And we'll go through these next. Okay. Hang on just a second. I just want to see if I can find my papers that have to do with them. Okay. Let's see. Let's... The first one is Plymouth Street Playground. We'll be speaking yes. to that. Uh, I'll, I'll take, yeah, I'll take this one. Uh, my name is Ray Dunitz um, with Ray Dunitz Landscape Architecture. Um, we're working with the city to um, design a bunch of the parks uh, throughout the city. We've, um, we've discovered that three of them were, are within the Conservation Commission's jurisdiction, and we're looking, we've, uh, we've submitted RDAs for those. Mm-hmm. So, Kyle, do you want to pull up? Uh, yes, I can do that for you. Give me one moment, please. See. Okay, thanks. I'm happy to share my screen if that's better. If you've got an easy access, I'm I'm kind of dealing with some pop-ups here. If you can do okay. it, you're welcome to. Uh, okay, great. Can everyone see my screen? We can see your, your chat back and forth to Marco. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't see my you can't see my okay, let me see if I can no, do, we're... do a new share here. This should be it. How about this? That's much better. That's better. The other one was more interesting. Marco's, <laughs> on, Marco's on the call as well, but in the background. So um, the first park um, that um, we're going to discuss tonight is Plymouth Street Park. Um, it does abut uh, Trout Brook. Um, you can see we've got uh, the edge of Trout Brook uh, labeled here. There's another red line. Um, you have your cursor? Can, or is that I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Cursor? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Can you see thank my you. cursor? Yes. Thank you. Yep. And this is the 25 foot river right. area. Um, this is an existing park. Um, we're simply doing um, some what I would call minor renovations to the existing park. Um, we're actually removing pervious area. There's an existing bituminous concrete pad over here that we're um, going to be reseeding with lawn. Um, the basketball courts are staying where they are. We're just resurfacing them. And then um, where, where the existing playground is located, we're, we're putting in porous uh, rubber surfacing. Um, so we're really not doing um, a tremendous amount of work here. Um, we do show erosion control all along uh, the back fence line for our during our construction uh, mm -hmm. period. And um, what will you surface the basketball feet? courts with? Um, currently, they're sur surface with bituminous concrete. We're just putting it back. We're we're um, we're removing the sort of 
top layer of it and then just repaving the top layer. Where is the um, replacement fence going? You're going from four foot to six foot fencing. Where is that going to be? We're removing uh, a portion of uh, four foot fence over here. Um, and this putting back four feet to the same height. We don't have any, I don't believe we have any six foot height fencing. Oh yeah, just around just around this edge down here in between the parking lot and the, there's a parking lot. I read lot. that it was going from four feet to six feet. That was my understanding based on the plan, but that may be- Replacing the existing four foot chain link fence with a new six foot chain link. Where would that be? I'm uh, thinking it's four feet in length. That's and in it's being expanded to six feet. That was my understanding, Ray. But but uh, if you're just replacing the four foot with a with a new four foot chain, yes, that it's, may, just, may it's have, just in kind. Just write yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we could just change that in our notes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I. I was a little confused because I didn't think we were doing that. Okay, Kyle, do you have anything uh, that you would like to add? Uh, yeah, sure. So as far as like uh, the resource areas impacted here, um, one note, uh, Ray, on this plan, the um, the two uh, FEMA flood uh, delineation lines are swapped as far as the labels. Um, the uh, the one that's um, the dashed uh, turquoise that's labeled FEMA floodway is actually the FEMA flood zone AE, and the solid line is actually the FEMA floodway. But that's not that big of a deal. I'm just letting you know that on the plan, those should be swapped. Um, okay. Everything outside of the 25, uh, sorry, um, everything outside of the, the the fence that that's going to be replaced, that four foot fence, um, is uh, let's see. Is that within the 25? Um, yeah, work other than the replacement of the chain link fence is uh, outside of the 20 foot uh, riverfront area. Um, so all the other proposed work is outside of the 20 foot, 25 foot riverfront area. Um, and then uh, the rest of this is already in, it's it's in an, an already degraded uh, flood plain. So as long as the, uh, we don't have an elevation change after the, the post-construction work, um, that shouldn't really affect um, uh, the flood zone. Um, so with all that said, um, my recommendation is that we issue a negative three determination uh, subject to the following conditions, um, that the site plan uh, should be updated with the correct labels of the FEMA flood zone and the FEMA floodway, um, and a straw waddle uh, erosion control shall be extended around the northeast corner of the to be replaced chain link fence. So right now, uh, Ray, uh, looks like the erosion control uh, kind of ends at that corner in the, in the north uh, east corner of that, that new that, that four foot chain link fence. And so we ask that that uh, the erosion control be extended around that wraps uh, around the fence all the way up to uh, Plymouth Street. Um, and all construction material and storage uh, for the project shall be placed outside of the correctly marked uh, FEMA flood zone AE. So that's the the right now on the plan, it's the FEMA floodway that's labeled FEMA floodway, but the the, the outermost dashed uh, FEMA line. Once they're correctly labeled, that will be the FEMA flood zone AE. So all staging uh, shall take you know, shall be outside of that uh, that flood zone. Would that be outside of the limit of work then? Uh, no, because the, 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 so the, 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 that turquoise line kind of cuts diagonally through the, the basketball oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the pathway oh, yeah, through the, the play yeah. area. Yeah, I was just looking at the top part, okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, finally, I also recommend that we uh, issue a positive 2B determination uh, stating the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed by this determination bordering lands subject to flooding. So uh, similar to the last uh, recommendation, we're just not confirming that these lines are correct. Um, but I am, and that's what the uh, positive 2B determination is saying, but the negative three says uh, there won't be any negative impacts on the resource areas. Um, are there any questions for me? Not for you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for um, either Mr. Carpenter or, um, I'm sorry, what was the- Ray, yeah. Thank you. 
So beta, that's what took me so long, uh, Peggy, to get these things posted is uh, I, I did have beta review my agent reports um, this time. So they've already kind of reviewed everything and, and they're in agreement. Jonathan's welcome to speak uh, to this if he chooses to. No, pretty straightforward. I agreed with uh, Kyle's recommendations as stated. Okay. Um, and then just uh, one last point. Um, I, I do see on the on the plan here where it says new six foot height chain link fence. Uh, but but if you're just going to be replacing it with a four in, or four foot, that's that doesn't change my determination at all. But it it is labeled there on the. Uh, it, is there an issue? It's a, it's a little bit confusing the way our drawing. I, you know, we'll have to get back with the with our staff because uh, I do see it labeled four feet and I also see it labeled six feet. Yeah. Um, is there an issue with a six foot fence that we should know about? No, no. As far as I'm concerned, it, it, the height isn't relevant uh, for our, okay. our determination. It's it's the erosion control. Yep. yep. Okay. Just yeah, just we want the erosion control to, to to extend around that corner up to Plymouth Street. Yep. Okay. We'll clarify that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Commissioners, I entertain. Um... A motion to um, issue a negative three determination and a positive two B. I'll make the motion to issue a negative three um, uh, with uh, the conditions outlined by Kyle and a positive two um, confirming that the map does not reflect. Uh, we don't consider that a correct. Um, Forget it. I'm sorry. Oh, we know what you mean. It all up, but all right. Negative three plus a positive two. Skip everything else I just said. <laughs> the Plymouth Street playground. It's getting late. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Well taken. It's getting really late. <laughs> I second that. Uh, whatever that was. <laughs> yep. Motion. Okay. The motion to issue a negative three determination with uh, conditions and a positive. Two determination for the Plymouth Street play playground has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Speak or aye. Clay aye. Curtis aye. Boris aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, I believe the next one on the agenda was the Tukas playground. Correct. Yes, that's correct. Um. So um, this is uh, Tuca's playground. We're we're replacing, uh, we're removing some old play equipment, putting in some new play equipment. Um, the city uh, asks us, you know, to take a look at accessibility, and currently the playground is not accessible. Um, so we are are looking to add two handicap parking spaces at the end of Trout Street to provide access to the, uh, for wheelchairs and whatnot to the playground. Um, Kyle had reached out to me earlier today to let us know that our FEMA flood line was inaccurate. We went from uh, the GIS maps um, and I reached out to our surveyor and he said, Kyle was absolutely right. So this is the modified, uh, Flood elevation, it's this turquoise line that pretty much encompasses um, the baseball field and these courts and, and the playground area. Um, see if I can zoom in a little bit. Um, anyway, um, I don't know. So, one second. Here we go. So we're here we have our the purple line is the hundred foot wetland buffer. And um, the 25 foot uh, perennial stream uh, bank in orange. Um, we did have uh, these wetlands flagged um, by Lucas Environmental. Uh -huh. um, and we had a survey done by uh, Feldman Geospatial, so everything on here is, is quite accurate. Um, 
you, this is the site preparation plan. Um, we're removing a bunch of stuff, pro protecting a very nice uh, 30 inch caliper tree. Um, we'll also be doing some accessibility improvements uh, on the other side of the park that are sort of, I believe, outside the jurisdiction. Here's, here's a plan uh, of, of most of the subject work uh, in the playground. We're adding uh, swing sets. Um, these will be, uh, they're in the flood zone, but they'll be the same elevation. Uh, we're not filling uh, to add these. Uh, they'll be sunk, you know, flush with finished grade. Um, here are the two handicapped parking spaces. Um, these will be out of bituminous concrete. And uh, this fill that's around the existing playground is, is just where there's uh, compacted soils um, um, and just basically filling in the 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 holes basically that have been uh, caused by kids playing there. Um, I believe that concludes uh, what I was I was going to talk about with this one. If you if I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to. Or Kyle, do you want to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think you did a pretty good job of summarizing, and thank you for updating the uh, the flood zone there. Um, yes, that that is uh, the correct uh, uh, delineation uh, that that we kind of caught there. Um, yeah, the only thing there on the map that's kind of within the uh, hundred foot buffer zone uh, for the wetland is is the new parking spots that they're going to be adding. Um, and then everything else is just kind of a like flood zone uh, a concern for us. So um, again, similar to the last park, because uh, this is already kind of a degraded flood zone, um, as long as there's no like change in elevation after the construction, um, this shouldn't really impact um, that. So um, as far as that's, you know, that's, that's one aspect of this. And then um, uh, I guess I, we're just ready to move on to the recommendations. Uh, I think you've done a good job of describing the plan, Ray. So um, based on my review of the RDA and the site inspection, I recommend issuing a negative three determination subject to the following changes, uh, conditions. And the first one is uh, you've already addressed, you've uh, modified the, the, the flood zone to ref, you know, correctly reflect uh, the 96 foot uh, elevation there. Um, the second thing is um, we would like, uh, I recommend that erosion controls, that the erosion controls mentioned in the RDA application uh, shall be added to the site preparation plan um, at minimum protecting the area within the marked 100 foot wetland buffer zone. So um, the area around the, the parking spots there, um, you, you do reference these, these erosion controls in the, in the application, but they're not on the, the site plan. So uh, we just like that to be included. So when, when the engineers are doing the work, it's right there. Um, and then finally, uh, all construction materials and storage uh, should be uh, take should be placed outside of the 100 foot wetland buffer zone. Um, well, okay, so the recommendation actually is uh, all material storage for the project shall be placed outside the 100 foot wetland buffer zone and the correct FEMA flood zone AE, and no changes in grade under post construction conditions shall be permitted. Uh, and then I'm also recommending that we issue a positive 2B determination, um, stating that the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed by the determination, the bordering vegetated wetland. So just the delineated wetland uh, down to the, um, uh, like the south uh, west portion of the map. Is the area around those play areas, is that grassed? Will that be grassed? Yes. And, uh, you know, Ray, one thing, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, uh, the recommendation is that you don't stage any materials within the floodplain. Uh, the floodplain basically encompasses the entire lower portion of the park there. So, you know, I'm not sure if you, um, you know, and you can't really stage it much farther north on Trout Street because, you know, that's residential access there. So that might be something that that may be a hang up. Um, I'm not sure, Jonathan, do you have any comments on, on that? Oh, sorry, I had trouble unmuting. Uh, in terms of uh, access concerns? 
No, it's, in terms of the recommendation is that they, they don't uh, store any construction material or um, stage anything within the floodplain. Um, since the floodplain is basically the entire, uh, you know, lower portion of the park there, um, what, what would be the, I mean, like, I, I, we have that as the recommendation, but like, I don't see what, what other options there are um, there. Uh, for storage elsewhere, yeah, I'd say if it's infeasible um, to store anything outside of the floodplain, that at a minimum, anything that's stored within the floodplain just be surrounded with erosion controls um, okay. and be removed in the event that a significant storm surge um, is approaching. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to be added as a condition? Yes. Okay. And I can't, I can't really imagine there will be a lot of storage here. Um, mm. We're not, we're not moving any earth or. Yeah. All right, and that's all that I've got. Any questions for me? Commissioner, just any questions for anyone? Laura did have to leave, but we yes. still do have, we still do have forum. Yeah, no questions from me, Joyce. Okay, then I entertain a motion, please, to, uh, oh gosh, got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> negative three and positive two B. Negative three plus positive two equals. <laughs> okay, uh, entertain a motion to recommend a negative three determination with conditions stated and added and a positive two B determination for, this is for the uh, Tukas Playground. Okay, let's try it again. I uh, make a motion to recommend um, a negative three determination and a positive two B uh, for Tukas Park. I second the motion. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Horace, aye. Motion passes. Tukas Playground is about to become redone. Awesome. Accessible. Okay. Uh, let's see. One more. Hillstrom Farm. I didn't know there was a Hillstrom Farm in Brockton. Yes. Where is this located anyway? It's near uh, North Cary. In between North Cary and North Avenue. Huh. And um, mostly uh, currently being used for soccer fields. Um, so I'm going to try to navigate here. So um, currently there's an existing, um, an old basketball court at the northern portion of the, let me see if I can just show you in context. Um, there's an old basketball court. There used to be an old entrance into the park, North Avenue. Um, and um, there were other types of fields out there. Tim, Tim could probably uh, talk more about the history of it, but um, uh, Park Corporation did the uh, wetland delineation. And we had this, once again, Feldman uh, serve, uh, surveyed it. Um, this purple line is the 100 foot wetland buffer, which goes through the old basketball court. The new plan here is to um, remove all the basketball appurtenances and uh, make that into a parking parking lot. Huh. Um, let's see. Here's our uh, erosion and sediment control plan, but let me just show you what it's planned to be. So this will be a new entrance into the park, um, small driveway, and uh, about. 20, 20 cars parking, but it's it's within the footprint of the existing asphalt parking lots. I mean, bituminous court. So we're 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 actually removing impervious area here um, to create a smaller a smaller space. And the other nice thing is that the parking lot will be outside the hundred foot wetland buffer. Mm -hmm. um, there there are some other 
at the other end of the park, um, we're restoring the uh, the soccer field, regrading it, um, reseeding it, putting in irrigation. There is uh, th that is within the hundred foot wetland buffer. There is uh, an old uh, tennis court that we're repurposing as a new futsal court. Um, Sorry, a new what what court? Futsal. It's it's like uh, it's like soccer inside of a fence. Oh, yeah, okay. And no pickleball, um, huh? No pickleball? No pickleball here. No, that wasn't on the on the on the on the wish list for this park. Um and the existing parking lot we're just renovating, renovating that. Um it's the asphalt's all crumbling and um basically putting back what's already there. Mm -hmm. Is that right on the wetland uh, wetland line? Ye it is, yeah, um, but not over, yeah. not over the edge of the wetlands. But that's where the parking is already currently located. Mm. So we're not we're not increasing the footprint at all. In fact, we may be making it smaller with um, better measurements for reusing the standard Brockton parking space uh, size. Why does the limit of work? Um, take a little uh, up in that right hand corner. Why does it, it look up. Like? We oh. have to initially, um, we were looking at uh, just renovating that whole driveway because oh. it's in rough shape. The other thing was that um, in order to irrigate the uh, the 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 the, fee, the field, we we need power in the site, mm -hmm. so we had to bring electricity. Oh up through the site. Um, those plans have changed a bit. Um, the electricity is going to be um, over and it's gonna be taken from this side and put and all the pumps and everything that the irrigation needs are gonna be up in this corner here because it was easier. There's currently an existing fire hydrant mm -hmm. uh, where my, my cursor is. We're, mm -hmm. gonna, we're gonna take the water supply from there to, to feed that irrigation. So, so is that other plan not? This this is a match line here. It's a big park. We couldn't fit it on one sheet. Okay. So, so oh, this this connects to the okay. other sheet. I see. Yeah, it's two sheets. So Ray, yeah. just just to clarify, so you're bringing both the water and the electric from uh, the access road at North Street. Correct. Okay. So there'll be a series of uh, utilities boxes and that that sort of thing for um, the uh, the irrigation controllers and uh, um, we the water the water pressure wasn't very good here so we have to bring in a booster pump to pump the to make the velocity of the water faster more pressure. Okay, then Ray, another question: If you go down to the other map of the soccer field. Yeah, um, I think I think Joyce's question was, you know, the limit of work in the top uh, top right corner there does uh, encroach in the wetland. So what? Why is that uh, yeah. within the wetland boundary? Uh, that's a good question. It shouldn't be. So we'll we'll fix that. Okay, so we can make that uh, a Thank condition. You. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was looking at the. I was looking down towards North Cary Street, but. <laughs> No, it's the, the upper upper corner. Yeah, yeah, that that needs we'll fix that. Okay, thank you. Any questions, Kyle? Do you have anything to add? Uh, no. Uh, but I can move forward with the recommendation. Uh, most That's everything's good. outside. Uh, you know, uh. This is obviously already in place. You know, we're just kind of uh, re re uh, re surfacing this parking area. Um, so based on my review uh, of the RDA and my site inspection, I recommend issuing a negative three determination fall, uh, subject to the following conditions. Um, so the first condition is that we're going to modify the limit of work. So it's outside of that, uh, the wetland boundary um, on this map here. Uh, secondly, um, due to the proximity of the work to the edge of the wetland, uh, and this is specifically uh, in on this map, Ray, is what we're talking about. Um, yep. 
Uh, due to the proximity of work to the edge uh, of the wetland, compost fiber tube shall be used for erosion control rather than the straw wattle as proposed. Um, and then also compost, compost fiber tubes, uh, tube erosion control shall be added to protect the isolated wetland near the southwest corner uh, of the North Cary Street parking lot. So if you look at this map here, um, down on the, down farther south and then to the left a little bit, um, on the yeah, on the left side of the road, uh, up in that corner between here, maybe I can just share on mine. Can I? Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Do I need to stop? No, nope, I can. I can just override you. I think. Okay. Okay, so I've got the map up pulled up here. Um, are you all able to see my screen? Yep. Okay, so these are uh, two uh, two delineated isolated uh, wetlands, and and this is the one that I'm kind of talking about here. Uh, while uh, isolated wetlands are outside of jurisdiction, um, since you're going to be right here anyway, and, and the work's going to be done, you're already putting erosion control on this side, thought it might be nice for you to put uh, erosion control and just kind of protect kind of this corner of, of the, the parking lot. Um, and then all disturbed areas uh, shall be seeded immediately following con construction, and uh, construction materials and storage for the project shall be placed outside of the 100-foot wetland buffer. So um, I think there's plenty of space for you guys to manage that uh, on this project. Um, and then I also recommend issuing a positive 2B determination stating the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed by this determination, uh, bordering uh, vegetated wetlands. So the same, same deal as before. Okay. Commissioners, are we good? I yes, I'm good. I'm good. Right. Entertain a negative three, please. Negative three, positive 2B. It's right around the corner from me, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so I make the recommendation to issue a negative three and a positive two B for Hillstrom Farm Park. Seconded. Okay, with with the conditions that have been outlined by Kyle. Yes, with right. the conditions that have been outlined by Kyle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, I. Horace, I. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We have a question Thank you. taking care of our kids. Any plans for working on the park near the Ashfield School? That's uh, a school department uh, playground facility. Um, so would... Oh, no, no. They have their own. They have their own park. At the Ashfield. At the Ashfield. But yeah, they, yeah. I don't have any care. I don't have any care and control over that. That's all no. school department. Okay. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, we're doing nine. Are you? Uh, we are. We so are it's just nine. these three that, that were, or that required yeah. RDA. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Good. Thank you for coming forward and, and for, you know, for doing that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Moving on. 9.30 already. Uh-oh. We're close. Can we just power through, girls? And guys, you think? I'm able. Ruby, I know you have to, I know you have a busy day tomorrow. Can we power through for another 10 minutes, you think? Yeah, we might as well okay. go on. Yeah. Okay. okay, so the next one is, let's see, uh, 2023 sewer system rehab, uh, Weston and Samson. Do we have representatives? Yep, uh, I think we've got two here. So let's uh, promote them to panelists. Oops. Bridgewater Brockton Sewer Extension, right? Yes. Um, it was an RTA request. I don't know. Well, no. So this is one that the commission uh, requested that they yeah. uh, submit an RDA for yeah. this. Yeah. So we, yeah, a little bit of background. We received a utility notification, and then the commission right. uh, requested that they submit an RDA. So mm -hmm. that's and mm -hmm. that's what this is. Um, all right, Anna or uh, Steve, would either of you like to speak to this briefly, and then we can get through. Uh, yeah. Okay, that, that would be excellent. And a very nice background. I didn't I didn't do as well as you did. Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Steve Peterson with uh, Weston and Samson Engineers. Obviously, I have Anna with me. Um, this project, um, yes, is a it's a municipal sewer project um, for the town of East Bridgewater. Town of East Bridgewater and the city of Brockton have entered into an intermunicipal agreement for East Bridgewater to be able to convey a limited amount um, of wastewater from the Corner, corner of East Bridgewater um, into the Brockton sewer system. So the project that 
uh, that we are designing uh, and moving forward with involves about 22,000 feet of pipe, um, but of which the last 1,300 feet is the last section of an eight inch force main um, in Thatcher Street within the city of Brockton. So basically coming from the Thatcher Street in East Bridgewater into Thatcher Street in East Bridgewater, I'm sorry, into Thatcher Street in Brockton. Uh, and it travels about 1300 feet along there. Uh, it's a eight inch PVC force main within, that's gonna be beneath the pave uh, service of Thatcher Street. It's basically they're gonna have to dig up one side of the road um, put the pipe in and then bury it and resurface the road when they're done. Uh, and the reason we're here tonight is because you know of that 1300 feet, about half of it is within um, 100 feet of adjacent uh, wetlands along the side of Thatcher Street in that area. Um, so Kyle, we can share the drawings if, if, if you want um, to go into a little more detail. Kyle, you've lost your voice. I've got them pull them now. I can go ahead and share if that's okay. Sure, that's fine. That's fine. Why don't you just? Um, this is the really the relevant one that has the the wetlands, on, you know, on yep. the map. Is this the this the screen that you were wanting to share? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the uh, the sheet pre previous to that doesn't is doesn't have any buffer zone impacts. Yeah. So that right, one there. Yeah. So this is this is another show, part of the map. Right. So coming from left to right, we're coming on Thatcher Street from East Bridgewater into Brockton, and then yeah, the second <laughs> sheet is basically the one where, again, you've got um, some resource areas adjacent to the road. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, um, you know, the biggest issue here will be siltation control during construction um, with all typical measures of straw wattles. Um, and like I said, at the end, you know, everything is to be um, restored to pre-construction conditions. We're not adding any structures other than a couple of manholes. There will be a couple of manhole covers uh, mm -hmm. in the street for future access to the pipe. It's about six to seven feet deep, the, the pipe itself. Uh, and again, it's a, um, it's a pressure sewer. So there's a pump station back in East Bridgewater. So there's gravity collector sewers collecting at a pump station and then about 14,000 feet of force main that brings it to Brockton. Again, with the last 1300 feet being here on Thatcher Street. <clears throat> and Kyle, I don't know. Um, I guess I'd open up to questions or any, or you want to get into How many homes in East Bridgewater will actually be um, serviced? So it's so the agree the IMA with Brockton is for seventy five thousand gallons per day of average daily wastewater flow, and this is really going into areas that are currently being uh, developed by the um, the Compass Medical um, and. There's a 40B development that's going to be going in in some of the uh, vacant land. There's a lot of vacant land off of North Bedford Street and Highland Street uh, and, and Winter Street. Um, there's a large uh, warehouse project being constructed right now uh, that's going to tie into it. So it's a lot of underdeveloped, underutilized land that couldn't be constructed, couldn't build septic systems, couldn't get the, the wastewater into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been underdeveloped for years. So it's it's not, there are no uh, residential properties being sewered by this. It is commercial um, development. Well, it's, a, it's a commercial industrial area. So there will be some high density housing um, at some point. So you, said, mentioned, oh, sorry. you mentioned a 40B, would that be residential? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, some high density residential okay. development. Any idea how many, how large that will be? Uh, I think it's like uh, 240 units. Okay, thank you. Yep. And um, what was the reason why it was the sewer system uh, needs to be connected to uh, Brockton as opposed to East Bridgewater? Uh, well, East Bridgewater doesn't have a wastewater treatment plant, so they don't have a a collect a sewer collection system. They're on septic, and this okay. this area can't be developed on septic. So, okay. so yeah, that's why we have the IMA. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay, any other questions before I kind of get started here? Please do, Kyle. I was just going to ask you to do that. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward uh, utility uh, exemption. Um, so, you know, I did the site visit. I reviewed the RDA application. 
Um, so I recommend issuing a negative five determination. And basically that's saying that the sewer extension project will not substantially change or enlarge an existing lawfully located structure using the service of the public. And uh, includes that includes best practice measures to reduce or minimize impacts to wetland or resources, resource areas and is therefore exempt from filing a notice of intent. So that's the first one, a negative mm -hmm. five determination. Um, I also recommend issuing a negative three determination subject to the following conditions. So due to the proximity to sensitive resource areas, compost fiber tubes, tubes shall be used instead of straw wattles to protect the approximate 198 linear feet of the Stewart extension within the 25 foot no touch zone of the bordering vegetated wetlands and all access trenches shall be closed at the end of the work day. I know most of this work is gonna be, um, uh, you're not gonna be trenching most of this. It's gonna be kind of like trenchless technology. Is that what I read in the? Uh, um, actually, no, this this will be open cut. They will be okay. trenching this work. So there is a couple of sections that'll be trenchless, but not this. All right, section. so would that be feasible to close those trenches up uh, at the end of the work day and then open yes. them up the next day? Okay, so that's yep. gonna be- Yeah, they won't leave the... any open trenches overnight. Okay, yep. great. Uh, and then finally, I rec recommend issuing a positive 2B determination stating that the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed by this determination, uh, the bordering vegetated wetlands. Um, any comments or questions, Steve, for me? Or anyone else? Anna, did you have anything that you'd like to add? No, I think Steve covered it very well. Okay. He was prepared to share his screen. Commissioners, any questions, comments? Who wants to do the math? <laughs> I entertain a, um, a motion, please. Hey, I'll um, issue a motion to um, permit uh, negative five determination plus Kyle's conditions and negative three uh, determination plus the conditions that are outlined by Kyle and a positive to be for the 2023 sewer system rehabilitation. Seconded. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Or aside. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great time. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Where are we now? DuPont substation or another RDA? Yes. Last one. Um, Allison is here to speak to this. So I've promoted Allison as a panelist. Hi, good evening. My name is Allison Milliman with BSC Group. I'm here on behalf of New England Power Company um, to discuss the request for determination of applicability. Um, the proposed activities include the installation of one riser pole um, just outside the um, existing substation. Uh, within the a disturbed area associated with the substation um, and an, an approximately 190 linear feet of underground conduit, um, total impacts to the 100 foot buffer zone <clears throat> once all work is complete is approximately two square feet associated with the new riser pole. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Mm -hmm. um, what Kyle's showing here is the existing DuPont substation is located off of Summer Street in Brockton. The, um, <clears throat> the existing usable yard is, is actually enclosed by the, the first fence um, that's, uh, let's see, on the northern side uh, near where the conduit is proposed. Um, then there's a secondary fence um, that's along the outside. Um, most of the, the 100 foot buffer zone in that area is previously disturbed and stabilized with, um, with rock. Uh, I can, um, I also, I don't know, Kyle, do you think it's in, helpful to show the photos of, of where that pole is and the existing um, conditions. Yeah, you know, and I may have some that I can get here. Otherwise, I'll let you share. Let me see yeah. what I've got. Let me know. Well, let's see here. It's... Hmm. 
Where's my pen? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't have any photos uploaded yet, so I'll stop sharing and you can you can take take over. Sure. Is everyone able to see my screen here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll start with this photo here. This is um, that first fence line um, that I discussed. This was a, a site review we did with the engineers uh, with New England Power. Um, where this uh, this stake is here, this is where that proposed riser pole will be installed. Um, from here, um, it it will con it will connect to um, the existing existing um, distribution facilities that are located on the outside of the um, outer fence. Um, this is all overhead work, so no impacts between you know, this area and where this pole is um, being proposed. Um, but then there will be an underground conduit that will be installed basically from this pole to bring the, um, the OPGW line in kind of in an angle and then enter into the substation underground. So after this pole is installed and the, the conduit is trenched in, um, they'll, they'll be backfilling it with the, the native soil that's in place, um, stabilizing it with a similar substrate that's currently existing. So this is pretty much uh, a riprap gravel mix um, that's in this area. Um, so for the most part, it's it's relatively a minor um, impacts, um, and there really will be no substantial change to the existing 100 foot buffer zone associated with that bordering vegetated wetland that's located on the far side of the fence. How large will that bowl be when it's installed? Uh, it's two square feet of of permanent impact. How tall will it be, though? I'm just um, riser poles typically can be anywhere between like 20 and 50 feet. It depends mm -hmm. on what they need for the clearance mm -hmm. when you're going, yeah, you know, because they have to design it so they have no um, electrical conflicts with overhead lines. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does the fence have to be moved to include that pole afterwards? No, there's no, there's no proposed changes to the existing fence lines on the, on the property. Kyle? Okay, um, so yeah, this is, uh, um, obviously this is utility work. Um, so I, I worked with Jonathan a, a little bit on this one. So um, he's instructed me that the uh, the utility pole itself uh, is exempt activity, uh, but the, the trenching uh, of the, 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 the power line into the substation isn't uh, doesn't doesn't qualify for that. But that said, uh, this is a relatively minor impact. Um, so I'm recommending that we issue a negative three determination subject to the following conditions. Um, straw wattle shall be uh, installed around the disturbed areas, like the, the trench and, and the pole installation areas. Um, mm -hmm. And then this determination is because, as I mentioned before, uh, trenching outside of roadways or driveways is not considered minor or exempt activity, uh, while the utility pole installation is, uh, but it's still going to get a negative determination. Um, and then finally, uh, we also are uh, recommending the issuance of a positive 2B determination, uh, stating the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed by this determination, uh, the bordering vegetated wetland. Thank you. No comments from me. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, questions, comments? I'll entertain a motion, please. I make a motion to issue um, the, is it certificate of compliance or is it RDA? No, it's an RDA. RDA. RDA, RDA. RDA for the DuPont substation, um, uh, negative, uh, negative three determination with conditions and a positive two B. Second it. So the motion has been made to issue a negative uh, five determination ne and negative negative three. Oh, I'm sorry, negative three. I'm sorry, negative three determination and positive two B determination. Yep. Um, motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Clay, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Yeah, thank you, Allison. Awesome. Good night. Bye-bye.
All right, and that concludes all of the uh, new applications that we've received this month. Um, the next two things um, on the agenda, I've got a series of reports and then uh, a couple utility notifications. Um, none of this actually needs a vote uh, from the commission tonight. So um, I guess we're uh, going to be at the pleasure of the commission. Do we want to work through these? We can handle these, I guess, through email potentially as well. Um, this is just mostly for your information as a commission, um, just to keep you guys updated as far as where these projects are. And then, you know, we have two utility notifications that have been submitted to the commission, just, just to, so we are aware this work is going to be happening. Dr. Sure. how long will this take? I was just going to ask that 10 minutes, do you think? To go yeah, I mean, yeah, it won't take long. I would just assume that than having you having to sit and, and do emails and I, I, if you don't mind, that would be sure. great. Yeah, have yeah. It, um, we have it as part of the record on uh, on tape too. Sure. Okay, great. Um, so then moving on, Joyce, to agenda item number 17 with the reports. So is Whitman Sewer. Yeah, so um, this is a, a project that's been before the commission. Um, you've issued uh, an order of conditions for this, and part of that is that they have to report to the commission uh, twice a year. Um, so this is, uh, and this is uploaded to the drive, um, and that's all that I really have to say about that. That's so we can, you know, you're able to review that at your pleasure, um, just to kind of keep track of where they are through the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then the Fuller Craft Museum, uh, there are a couple different things that are happening here with the Fuller Craft Museum. Um, they have uh, some interesting stormwater complications that have just arisen in the last year. Um, so we're trying to work with Beta uh, to determine um, what's happening there. Uh, uh, Fuller Craft Museum just recently funded uh, the scope and fee for Beta to do their actual review. So um, we just got that check-in within the last week. Um, so that's why nothing's being actually presented to you today. Um, but we're looking for, uh, by July, uh, we'll have some sort of new information uh, with Beta's input um, on this project. Additionally, the Fuller Craft Museum uh, was issued uh, a, a, an enforcement order for um, kind of lack of attention to uh, a, a resource area that they they kind of trenched and connected a bordering uh, isolated wetland to uh, because it was it was flooding with all this new stormwater issues that they've been having. So they they got an emergency certification to kind of trench that and drain that area out. Uh, and that trenching area, um, Megan issued an enforcement order because that wasn't being uh, maintained and, and wasn't, you know, wasn't really finished and stabilized like it really should be. Uh, but they've sent me some photos recently. They did seed it this spring uh, and stuff's finally coming, uh, starting to come up there. So that's kind of an update on there. We hope to have an actual, uh, you know, an action item for the commission uh, next month. Uh, and that's really it for the Fuller Craft Museum. So that was an enforcement order and an NOI as well. Is that? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's. I, I think they. I think they did file an NOI originally, but since then their plans have kind of changed because there's oh. all this extra stormwater stuff that they're trying to figure out. There's a lot of flooding there that's happening. So, so we're kind of like the NOI. The original plan that they put forth with the NOI is like I don't think any longer kind of what they're aiming for. Yeah. So we're kind of reassessing the situation. And that's why Beta is getting involved to kind of help try to identify what the problem is with this flooding on, on the west side of the parking lot. Uh, and then we're kind of, you know, have a new plan, hopefully, um, coming forth uh, in July. Okay, great. Sounds okay. great. And then all gone, Quinn? Yeah, so then these next two are just a couple of utility notifications that we received. Um, the Algonquin uh, system pipeline. Um, let me see if I can pull up the map here for this one. Uh, they, 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 basically this is a, this is a natural gas pipeline, uh, as part of their, uh, routine maintenance, they, they do testing along, along their, uh, their pipes and, uh, they, they detect an, an anomaly, uh, uh, within a section of pipe that goes through Brockton. So as part of, uh, their, you know, their standard procedure, they need to go in and like, uh, check out this pipe. And that's going to involve, um, kind of trenching it up and, and exposing the pipe. And, uh, and then uh, determining what, if anything's wrong with it, and then doing those repairs and then uh, covering the trench back up. So they, they anticipate this might take up to about a week. Um, and let me show you a map maybe of where this proposed work is going to be taking place. It's, it's on the south side of Brockton, kind of close to the, uh, the, uh, the VA hospital. It's the west side, I think. It, it looks like it's really close. Well, to yeah, the, like the southwest corner. Yeah. It looks like it's right by the high school. 
So let me see here. I think that's high school. Is that high school? Okay, so uh, here's the VA hospital. Um, this is Belmont Street. Um, so this is the, the, the red portion is the area that they're going to be uh, uh, digging up. So this is a very rough map, just to kind of give you a general area, uh, uh, general idea of the right area. By the high school. And you, know when is, be, you know when they'll do that? Um, it, it says in the in the document, I don't have it that in front of me right this moment. So oh, I can look okay. at it in, the, in a moment here. But so it's basically right next to this this diamond. And, and it is uh, next to uh, this West Meadow Brook. Um, yeah. So it's definitely within the resource area. That's why they're, you know, uh, contacting us. But, you know, this work is, you know, it's exempt. Um, unless Jonathan has anything else to say. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, we could, we've required RDAs to be applied before, I think, but one of the, it's either this one or the next one, they're planning on doing the work like in July. So like coming up very soon. So I don't know okay. if like, um, you know, let's, let's look at and see when, when this is actually it's right by the Shaw that. center. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Kyle, if you have um, any concerns on whether this might require an RDA or not. I'm happy to take a closer look um, if you want to send the document our way. Okay, um, you know, and, and, and that's something we can we can certainly do. Um, yeah, I can forward that on. I, I'm sure that. Well, you know, I, I know you've just Jonathan. Thank you. You've been you've been uh, so helpful. You got, Jonathan got thrown into this whole mess yesterday, um, so he's he's been doing his best to kind of get caught up on everything. So thank you, Jonathan. Um, so thank you. Okay, yeah, so right here, um, it's scheduled uh, to occur in the third quarter, uh, currently scheduled for July, uh, but subject to change based on field conditions. So uh, coming up relatively soon. Okay, so that's that's this one. So would you like me to, to, to kind of ask Beta to, to kind of review that to see if they think an RDA is, is appropriate? Probably would have to be expedited pretty quickly if they want to do it in July, because it would have to be, we'd have to hear the RDA in, at the next meeting, which would... Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I, if you can have them make, take a look at it and see if it would be safe, you know, feel that it's safe to go without the RDA. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, digging up a gas line right next to a school and senior center is. Well, yeah, I mean, it's better, it's better that they dig it up and repair it rather than the alternative. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. You know. No, you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the other one um, uh, is uh, New England Power Company. Uh, they will be repairing through like four or five different uh, electrical pole footers uh, throughout the, the city of Brockton. Um, let's see, just look at the map here. So um, there, it looks like there are four poles here. Again, here's the VA hospital, four poles around this area. And then there's one pole uh, up here. So it looks like five poles in total. And uh, you know, this is obviously within, within a resource area. You can see this on this map. Um, and, you know, again, like they're going to be doing uh, the standard, um, you know, like, uh, like mats they put down so they don't like uh, impact the wetlands as they as they do this utility work. But again, um, pretty standard uh, utility kind of thing here. Um, as far as if you think that we should have them do an RDA for this as well, it's something we could look into. But um, this is just a, a, a second utility notification. And I'm not sure if they have a. So this is a. Um, this is part of the uh, fiscal year 24 footer repair project. I don't think we have any other dates involved here. Normal maintenance of an existing facility, okay. Uh, most of the, I think most of the utilities have really good practices, it seems. But, yeah. Commissioners, do we want to see if it, well, can you just send it on to Jonathan to see? Yeah, I can send both of these on and then yeah, just have them to, like, give it a look over and see if that'd they think, uh, yeah, an that'd RDA is appropriate sure. or not. Sure, sure. It, it appears that they've covered their, um, uh, the bases by, you know, um, uh, showing us the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act's 
that uh, regulate. And they're exempt, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that yeah. they are exempt. But it never hurts to have um, Jonathan take a look at it. Sure. Okay, well, yeah, Jonathan, I'll send those both over to you in the morning and uh, have you guys just give a look over those. If that's right. okay. Okay, right. thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. We made it. It's not even 10 yet. Great job. <laughs> How close is it? You uh, are funny. 54. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle, you you have been incredible the amount of work you've been doing. Very, well, very truly. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. I know. I know. Next time, we just have to get the stuff done like, like on less of a Right. Yeah. At that's the, the end, goal. right before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I okay. think you deserve a gold medal for this. Yeah. yeah. And thank you very much for doing the, uh, for allow going out and signing those um, orders of condition, you know, the sign offs on the certificates of co compliance. It's, I think that that was a nice way to do it. Yeah. No, I think that's a good compromise. So I'm happy that that worked out. Yeah. Okie dokie, Jamoki. I make a motion to close this darn meeting. I make a motion to motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion second to make. one. Ruby, second that. Okay. All in favor. Clay I. Curtis I. Kyle, you vote? I don't vote. <laughs> Sorry. I. I know. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Right, thank everyone. you. Have a good night. Thanks, Good night. Good night.